got news for you. Hot off what the presses. I've got I've got the news. I mean, it's like the. Well, that's like Morse code. But like, uh, maybe like imagine well, that's what they used in all those things. Yeah. yeah, imagine like a little plane flying around the earth. It's like news of the internet today. It's a news on. Actually, the news is that the, the, there's not really all that much news this week. So <laughs> um, that's amazing. Yes, like, really. Yes. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the Rage Like Podcast at Rage Like Time, Jeff. And I'm Mike. And there is a serious possibility that we might be able to get through all of the news and then also run out of questions this week. And then we'll only be podcasting for like, you know, 90 minutes. But everybody knows that's not going to happen. You all know. That's never going to happen. That's like when I say like, oh, I think we're almost done with the sequential. I think we're just about done. (laughs) This is the last level. (laughs) Yeah. We'll see Johnny (laughs) Depp any minute now. (laughs) So, yes. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Before we get to the no news this week, uh, I I am, am hankering. I've got a I've got a, a a heaping hanker inside of me to discuss Godzilla singular point with somebody. Oh, okay. And I I'm pretty sure that Michael has watched Godzilla. I I think he thought I was going to say that new Gundam movie, but I didn't get a chance to watch it because I was plowed through Godzilla I, singular point. I haven't seen the new Gundam either because I was working. So okay, well good. Then we we'll put that out for another day. So yeah, I like literally an hour and a half before we started this podcast, I finally watched the last episode of Godzilla singular point, and Michael. I don't know if I like it. (laughs) That's the thing about Singular Point is that um, the way it ends is kind of weird. I like, like, I like the ending, but that's because, you know, I have things I can point to that it reminds me of. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's, it kind of, it kind of just ends, but it feels, but like it's, it it definitely wants more to happen later on because there's an after credit scene. Yeah. In the last one. So it's like, well, you guys are just saving up for more stuff to happen. But the way the way it happens is just kind of it's weird. Like, I don't know. The whole show was weird in general. But that's why I really like it, because it's just batshit insane compared to most things. So Godzilla related. here's the thing is that I, I really liked it when it started out. But as it went on, like the concepts were starting to fly over my head. And then it was just like, you know, they're they're outlining all of these. I mean. Okay, when 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 I was originally gonna watch this, I was like, "Yeah, crack out, crack open a six pack and watch Godzilla's Singular Point." And Matt was like, "I don't know if you want to do that." And I was like, "Shut up, Matt! I'm smart. I'm a smarty smart. I watch anime all the time." But then I started watching. And I was like, "I don't know if I can understand what's happening in this show," whilst like completely intoxicated because it's really fast, it's really dense, and if you miss something like. They don't really go backwards and reinforce concepts all that much. They just kind of build on every th- all the bullshit gobbledygook that is also – this is also one of those times where I almost wish I would have watched it dubbed because I was reading all of this in subtitles whilst the uh, uh, fucking wackadoo j- jaguar is is talking like a like an anime baby uh, at the same time and, and, like, cutting up spiders and shit. And I'm just like, well, wait a minute. And then they flash over to this lady doing the science, and she's talking about this shit, and there's just, like, there's so many – times where somebody's like folding a piece of paper and putting something in a piece of paper and it's like oh that that explains what's going on here and i'm like no go back go back it was like (laughs) i got to the end and i honestly felt like i watched even the evangelion of of uh godzilla shows which is saying something considering that hideako ano did shin godzilla and i got through that no problem whatsoever here's the here's the thing is i completely agree with everything you said because there's I, i me and matt and some people did review for one of us for it. And one of the things I said in the review is just like, this show doesn't care if you understood what happened. Either you're you're following it or you're not. Like, the show's just like, did you understand that? You didn't? I don't fucking care. <laughs> it just keeps going. And it's like, and either you're in, you're in or you're out is really, like, the main issue with that part of it. Yeah. Because, like, honestly, like, I one of them I, that I did a review with did watch it in the dub. But it everything is said so fast. He was trying to like do stuff at the same time, and he's just like I don't like. He had to like rewind a bunch of times, whereas I was just like reading it like as fast as I could. <laughs> so well, then so the, I was able to absorb it a little better. The problem that I the problem that I ended up with then was that by the time I got to the end, like so much of the climax of the movie was based on all of these concepts that I had started to like kind of lose track of at a certain point. So then when it got to the end and the big like. The, the the big dramatic finale happens i was like what and then it was like over and i was like oh 
Okay, I guess. I don't really... So... I don't know, but then I don't know if I want to watch it again because it's it was very weirdly paced. It's like it's so different than any other anime I've ever seen, and I think it's interesting. And I like the style. I really like J- Jaguar. I really like their their silly J- Jaguar robot yeah. who, who gets cooler and cooler as time goes on. Um, but I'm not entirely. I I'm still trying to process my feelings. I don't know if I liked it. Usually, I get done watching an anime, and I'm just like, "That was tits," or "That was shit." And like this time, I'm like, uh, uh, "Question marks?" Like I really liked it, to be honest. Like I really, really liked it. Um, because there's so much of it that just it it really is just like it. It reminds me of just the like you said, the Evangelion, just like science and stuff. But this guy like has legitimate science backing him up because it turns out the guy has like a a, a a science degree in like everything that he talks about in this in this anime mm-hmm. and there's and it does such a unique set of things with all of these kaiju that i just i couldn't help but love it by the time it was done but i get why i get everything you're saying like i have nothing to say against anything you've said <laughs> <laughs> well that's good because you know objective or uh, opinions are subjective so no one should come at me for my opinion because it's just what the fuck some one dumb podcaster thought about one godzilla thing on netflix like i'm not it's not like i'm the decider about whether they make season two of singular point or anything you it's call like call up netflix and you're like tell, tell matt frank that it was me if i was the one who canceled it. <laughs> it was me i hold godzilla's future in my hands i mean but this is weird because like you know I really liked Shin Godzilla and everybody make more Godzuki media. I just that was like that, that was like two hours of whiteboards and conference rooms and fucking like some politician residing in disgrace. And I was like, yeah, that's the kind of Godzilla movie I want to see. I don't want to see him fight the monkey. I want to see some scientists write on a whiteboard and then some dude who has to like have a press conference about why he's bad at Godzilla and then like a bunch of firefighters that shove the hoses into Godzilla and then the movie over and everybody's like we did it and i'm like hey that was the most boring godzilla movie i've ever seen and i fucking loved it i love Shin godzilla <laughs> because that thing is also just kind of insane because they're, they're both insane for very different reasons yeah and but their godzillas are very similar mm-hmm. in what they do but the shin is supposed to be like i think the biggest of them no i think the second biggest now because the american one is supposed to be the biggest one i think the biggest one is the um, one from the netflix from the outer space show oh that's right the earth one <laughs> yeah the one, the, 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 i think it's just called godzilla earth or something because that thing is the size of a mountain yep um yeah that's the biggest one and then i think after that it's american one and after that it's shin this so. one's actually like one of the smaller ones but it's fascinating like the whole thing like everything about this godzilla is just absolutely fascinating to me i'm glad that you're able to finish it because yeah it's a it's a wordy bastard <laughs> it's i really the thing i couldn't i couldn't um i couldn't binge it i had to just stop at certain points because oh, okay. i was like this is too dense i can't like and maybe that's the problem is maybe you need to really watch it all like super back to back so that you're not disconnected from the thing they were talking about last time to the thing they're talking about this time but i don't know maybe it, i binged it on a, like kind of on accident because I was going to pace it out because it was one of those things where I was like, well, I have work. And then, you know, I have work the next day. And I was like, I'm just going to watch you know, one during lunch, another one after work, and then I'll go to sleep. And then the one after work turned into the rest of the fucking show. <laughs> well, there you go. That's definitely happened to me before. Speaking of of, of uh, heady Evangelion, uh, I also, there was also news this week that the Evangelion, the fourth movie, is going to be coming to uh, the states next month i believe it's next month it's in august i think 3.1 or 3.0 plus 1.0 or something is the name of it yep something like that um which is like why (laughs) (laughs) like it's like it's hard to figure out which ones you're what order you're supposed to watch them in because of their weird ass names yep uh so yeah but you know it kind of pisses me off because it's coming to amazon and i'm like oh no guys the rest is on netflix can you you just fucking sign like a deal quit bopping between services i mean you know i got amazon so i can get fucking you know uh raspberry pies delivered whenever i want but you know (laughs) (laughs) still still uh i get it yeah well, outside of Shin Godzilla, you see anything cool worth mentioning before we jump into the main event, Michael? Nothing cool worth mentioning. Uh, I finished the Duke Nukem Forever DLC. Don't talk to me. <laughs> so I you. That's why I said I have nothing cool to mention. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I beat I beat all of Duke Nukem Forever again, like including the DLC 
on my Series X because it loaded it the fastest of any console I own. People may not know this because they may not watch. Some people just listen to the podcast. They don't watch the, the video episodes. But oh, I guess that's true. <laughs> Michael bought a Series X. He got a Series X. And then like the second game that he played on it was fucking Duke Nukem Forever because yeah. he's he's just trolling you all. He's trolling all of you, but he's trolling me the most. Ooh, meh, handshake. I, I legitimately kind of enjoy Duke Nukem Forever. It is the most guilty of pleasures I own video game-wise, and I've beaten it more than any normal human being should have, which is very similar to my love of Superman 4. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I got to move past this, or we're, I'm going to shake my fist <laughs> at you like an old man on his lawn. Uh, speaking of old men on their lawns, uh, we got the full presentation of Kazu Kazama for Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, I, I this is one where I I was trying to watch it. I don't know if I have like a brain problem situation that's going on, Michael, but like. This was so fucking dense with information that I just could not give a shit about, about, like, the very, very specific moves. I mean, obviously, it's a Mr. Sakurai Presents, and but the, the thing with this one, obviously, is that, or not obviously, but the thing with this one is that I was, I've never been a Tekken guy, so, like, I didn't really have a good frame of reference for the whole, like translating Tekken moves into Smash. It seems like they did a really interesting job, and he seems like a very strange fighter like very very powerful up close but like with some 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 distance issues like uh he's got a the devil lay devil blaster that kind of is like a standoff type of thing but that you really want to get up close because if you just what do you say if you just hold down like the normal attack button he does the 10 hit combo all on his own or do you keep yeah, so jamming if you, it if, if you, you can do both you can either hold it hold it down and he'll do the entire 10 hit um, or you can hit it and he'll do the entire 10 hit um, the main reason for that is because you can you can pause in between mm -hmm. and do just different hits instead of the entire ten hit. Oh right, kind of thing. The way you know you would in like not a, I I want to say a normal fighting game I guess, but like like a, like as a a combo system, a, a normal combo system. Like punch a couple times, wait, and then hit again, and it'll do a different thing, or just hold down, and yeah, he'll do the entire ten hit. Yeah, it's really strange. Um, uh, it seems. He seems like a like an interesting addition. Like he kind of, you know what? He reminds me a lot of when I watched the one for Sephiroth, where it was like, there's some really serious strengths here, but they're counterbalanced by some some really interesting weaknesses. And uh, Kazu definitely seems like a character that is like there to appeal to people that are very technically minded. Like I think he's got more input. Uh, uh, what are, what are they more input like attacks than anybody else that I've ever seen in Smash? Like more. He's He's all yeah. He's absolutely the most technical character in the game, I think now, because he has so many things that he does with just the A button mm -hmm. that it's just like what the fuck. Like, cause I I I thought Terry was real dense, <laughs> but when I watched Kazuya, I was like, holy shit! Like, look at all this insane shit. Cause at first I thought some of his moves were just gonna be B button things. Cause one of his most famous um, moves ever is this like it's kind of like a spin kick. Like what he does is he kicks. And then he and then he kicks low. Oh, he kicks high and then he kicks low real quick. Right. And then because that w that was a special move in um, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. That's how they did it. They made it like a Hadouken motion kind of thing. Whereas in this, it's like no, you got to do the A button a very specific way to do it because all his B button stuff is is his double trigger stuff, which I did not expect at all. And then there there's his um his rage drive, which is also just fascinating because it's um it's very similar to um. Sephiroth's one one winged angel thing, right? Whereas once you reach a hundred percent damage, he ga he gains a one point one boost in power, and and then there's also if you can use their down B to use it for a very specifically strong version of that down B, and that uses it. But other than that, it's like unlimited until you decide to do that, or you get beat up enough and then it just turns off. Yeah, which is just. And that's just part of it. Like that's <laughs> this th this thing's like what like forty minutes of yeah. just like almost this. Like the last three minutes are like, and here's some me costumes real quick. <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really crazy. Like one of the moves that he has is if you hit, 
if you hit A while he's standing up, there's a specific move that happens. The taunt is in a is like a four hit combo or something yeah. like that. Like, um, it's it's very dense. And I I mean you know for anybody that's interested in it, I highly recommend going and looking at it. Um, I, I mean think you know my favorite thing about him is uh is he has a Tekken jump, which oh yeah people don't know what that means. In Tekken, you have the like the lowest jump of like anybody, mm-hmm. and so he he only basically jumps like not even like a foot off the ground <laughs> kind of thing. Like he like of all the Smash characters, he has like the lowest jump, but he's also heavy as shit because of it. So it's like harder to knock him off. So it's it makes it to where he doesn't need to jump as much. He also does. He has like a uh, like what like an upward attack that'll hit people on like the stage ab- above. I don't know. He's such a fucking wackadoodle. Go usually ever go watch this. We also saw the stage, which is Heihachi's uh, uh, like kind of dojo. Uh, yeah, he's got like a mountain dojo. Uh, but what's interesting about this one is that it's all closed in by default, and so in order to 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 defeat people you literally have to like break them th- you have to break the wall open and then throw them out of the stage as opposed to just you know these big open air stages like uh, pretty much every other smash brothers stage is right like is I there another the stage that does this one, the closest one is the um the king of fighters stage mm. because that one has like invisible walls that oh, right. shatter to make them launch but for the most part, like it, but the it, it's but you can see past it. And I think you can walk past it, whereas I don't think you can do that in this one. Yeah, you literally have to break it, and it regenerates over time, <laughs> which yeah. is also really strange. Um, it's really cool to look at, though. Yeah, it's it's really and bizarre. Apparently, Haichi reacts to like chaos. Because he will show up in the background. Yeah, he's so just like KO somebody. He'll be like, "Ah, oh, you stupid buck," <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, he'll just hang out there. Um, yeah, so there's all that, and then we got you know the obligatory me fighters, which I think is going to be um, uh, a, a real well. First off, it was a, a real goddamn sword heavy uh, group this time around. It was um, what was that? The first one was the the guy from Tales of Vesperia, yeah, uh, Lloyd from Tales of Vesperia, and then the the Dragonborn, the Dovahkiin from Skyrim. Yeah. Um, and then fucking Dante from Devil May Cry, which everybody's mad about. Michael tells me everybody's mad about. Michael keeps me yeah, informed about all the Smash drama, the drama in the Smash community. Yeah, it shattered everybody's hopes and dreams of, that, of people who wanted Dante in the game, as well as the meme of asking for Dante. <laughs> yeah, in the game, so that's unfortunate. But uh, but yeah, they added the Shante outfit because uh, she's the only not fucking sword person. But she also gets a song, yeah, which I thought was really cool. Because uh, she's a character that constantly people would ask for, and that's another one of those ones that's like, well, this is a little disappointing because that would have been kind of cool. I mean, Shantae, I, having played every single Shantae game, because after I played the last one, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play through all of them. Uh, having played all the Shantae games, I can say that like, I don't think Shantae would make the best... Um, the best fighter in the world just because she doesn't have... she's I don't know. She's got a lot of interesting stuff, but she's not as dense um with mechanics as a lot of the other characters that they have put into smash um i wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason they ended up not pick using her because that that's the thing is that like sakurai has gone on record is like look we have to figure out if these things will work in a fighting game sort of sense right and not everybody's gonna work that way and not everyone's gonna have a license for it either yeah uh also he said at the end that you know there there's gonna be there's only one more character in fighter pack 2 and they're not doing another fighter pack and that that character should be out for the end of the year michael it's time to play the little game i'd call let's speculate wildly about who the next character is and none of the ones that you talked about at my house the other day you got to come up with some brand new bullshit off the top of your head even though the people at it's home gonna, don't it's gonna know. be sakurai and he's gonna like he's gonna be like shang sung <laughs> where he can do everybody's moves what if it's Spider-Man? What is just fucking <laughs> Spider-Man? Put like Spider-Man in there before the Avengers games does. <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere, out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna start making more and more bizarre, uh, bizarre stuff. But what if it's James Pond? Uh, James Pond? <laughs> just like that's the last one. The end. Suck it, you losers! Quit downvoting our videos, you fucks. Because it's those. It's that putt putt guy from Mario Golf. 
Oh, I thought you, I thought you meant the putt putt from. Uh, do you remember that like that like those uh, the uh, um, educational games? Uh, oh yeah, that would have worked too. Yeah, <laughs> the little putt putt car guy. Yeah, the little like purple putt putt guy from from yeah. the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Put those guys in there. Put, put Pajama guys. Sam. Was yeah. that what his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Throw throw those guys in. You know what? You know what? Make I, them all like make, make like the Pokemon trainer where you can bring out different ones i'm gonna i'm gonna come on record i'm gonna i'm gonna make my bet i'm gonna put my my plant my flag in the ground this is like a a thousand to one vegas odds you all have to give me ten dollars if this is true mist it's just gonna mist. be the whole level from mist is the new me fighter at the end of fighter pack six that's why it's taking so long cool they've got to have the whole level all the and then like it combos with all the different puzzles from the level like books are coming out and shit like that um it's just the you level you do just just put the Ninja Turtles in. That way you have four four different shadow characters or whatever. They all uh, just do the same thing, but slightly different. Man, those uh, those uh, those reptilian hookers are already in Brawlhalla and Mortal Kombat. I don't think that they you're going to be in everything. <laughs> well, they're in Injustice. They're not in Mortal Kombat. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Man, that pizza, well, though. Put them in Mortal Kombat, actually. I actually do that. <laughs> I don't think that anybody wants to see the Ninja Turtles get an X-ray attack. I don't want to see the Ninja Turtles get X-ray attacked. I, w- I wonder how that would even work. Like, do they even have normal skeletons? Or is that how a turtle works? I don't know. I think so. Um, horrifying. So then also, Michael sent me a whole article that apparently if you turn uh, Kazuya's AI up to nine, he just fucking wrecks the shop uh, in it's Ultimate. Um, there's actually what this article at Destructoid was talking about how there's like an actual, there's a, a novelty Twitter account called Level 9 CPU Kazuya that's out there now. Um, it's pretty savage. Like that entire like character is just annihilating fucking people. Yeah. And I saw a meme with like a sweating Goku that was just like, if that level nine can do this, what can a level fifty amiibo Kazuya do? <laughs> right, right, yeah. It's it's pretty it's pretty ridiculous. Um, even apparently, if you just put it on um, like mirror match CPU versus, it just kicks so much ass. <laughs> my favorite was was a meme where it's like, can I sign Kazuya level nine for my esports Smash team? <laughs> Yeah, I liked the I liked these the some of the Twitter captures that were in here with this guy that was just like, "What did you do? What did you do? What did you do?" <laughs> like, I like how one of them he looks like he like wants to just give up on life after yeah. dying to yep. it like immediately cuz he dies like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's like it's so fast that I'm like, "Holy shit." Yep. Uh, all right, from there, let's move on. We got a bunch more Nintendo news. Uh, we got a trailer, a quality of life trailer for Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I am tickled by this trailer so much. It's be- a great trailer. Uh, because, like, oh, whoa, oh, let's not have the audio coming through my speakers. Um, uh, first off, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and more excited for this. Uh, but apparently you can get fee to give you some optional help you can like call her up and get tips and tricks from her they talk about the controls but my favorite part <laughs> is that this is literally put like front and center you can you can fast forward the dialogue like you could you could hit the a button to just make the dialogue come up you know like in a video game <laughs> yeah like in any other zelda game to be honest it's uh-huh. like, why did this one not do it i like the way that they put this as a feature of this trailer streamlined item information because i don't know if you remember but in the original skyward sword whenever you pick something up it would give you a description of the item and be like ah oh, this is a rupee you use it to buy shit and then if you ever exited the game and then came back to it the next time you picked up a rupee it would be like hey this is a rupee you buy stuff with it but for everything for every health item for every like every time you pick something up after you quit the game and came back into it the game would once again the first time you picked it up do like the little tutorial like hey this is what this is and this is literally in this trailer as like as like an update like a quality of life improvement it's like no no this was a mistake that you fixed you fixed a mistake nintendo because Man, no wonder everyone hated this game because <laughs> everything it says just sounds like normal things you would expect from a game because mm-hmm. uh, i never played skyward sword because when it came out it, it, you needed the the wii um what was it called the motion uh, plus motion plus and i didn't have one anymore because i my brother had taken it the one that we had basically yeah, not, I didn't have any of the new ones that had it built in. I had to, you, I had to get the mm. extension that you had to click on the bottom. So I was like, well, I don't really want to spend a bunch of money on just some fucking Zelda game real quick that I didn't play the Wii that much with anymore. Yeah, and so and then everyone fucking hated it, and I was like, okay, well that saves me some money. <laughs> well, the last thing in here should tell you another thing where it's like 
skippable cutscenes. You can skip the cutscene of a, like a 15 year old game or a 10 year old game that you've already played and it's like great thanks that should never have been a problem in the fucking first place I like how excited they are about stuff that just sounds like <laughs> normal shit in every other zelda game <laughs> yeah yeah as far as i can as far as i'm concerned this this information to all of you should nullify what everybody's like right but they invented z targeting and i'm like right but they they had to invent skip cutscenes like a decade after that. Like, what are you what are you talking about? But in any case, I'm actually really excited to play this because I can play it without having to waggle my arms around like a like a fourth grader. I could just you know tap on the tap on the right stick to to slash instead of having to whip my hands all over the place. Get tired. I'm, I'm old, I man. I, yeah, because when they first announced it, I remember. They went out of their way to explain how they, you know, they fixed the um, some of the motion control stuff. Yeah. So I didn't hear them mention that you don't have to. So I was like, fuck this thing. Like, I don't want to do any of this. But then Matt, like, had the point out to me. He's like, no, they, they said you can do it with manual control. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll give it a shot. But Matt, Matt I remember Matt tried doing a full playthrough of Skyward Sword with a friend of his. Mm -hmm. And he didn't finish it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so it's like i don't know if i should play it just based on that alone but see I don't know. here's the thing is that i actually really liked like the story and i liked the 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 upgrades and i thought it was a good game it's just it was hampered by the fact that you had to stand there and waggle your arms around and i just don't want to play video games like that i don't want to i don't want to wag especially not for a long game like this like this isn't a this isn't a six hour game this is you know like a 20 25 hour game or something like that like it's a long game and the yeah, fact there's that no way i could do that and that sort of thing yeah and that was back when i worked at spill and i was trying to finish it for review like in a week so i was marathoning it Damn. and it, i just hated it that combined with things like i said like the you know you get tired right you save you quit you load the game back up you pick up a rupee and the game is like hey baby cakes this is how this is what this is for and i'm just like i fucking know already <laughs> um so i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm hoping it's gonna be pretty good uh we also got an update everybody forgot about it but there's an update for mario kart live um oh yeah that's the thing yeah the little remote control mario kart that adds like it's a little really easy to get one too like i thought it was gonna be difficult but i see them fucking everywhere oh really Maybe I'll have to buy one and do a video for it sometime. Yeah, I keep going like targets and shit, and they're just like, oh, you want to switch? We don't have any, but we got Mario's fucking like gold kart thing. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. There's a new there's a new uh, Yoshi skin that gets plastered over your little Mario kart. There's like a new level that has some different like road hazards, like oil slicks and stuff that'll pop up. And this is just a free update. So, hey, if you got one of these and you're tired of it, maybe turn it back on and see how it goes. Uh, let's see. <laughs> from here we're, we're we're about to move into the the or the, the 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 fucked up website version or uh, part of the podcast um so this is a i thought this was an interesting article <laughs> so a few years back there was this kid that was running this website called rom universe named matthew and nintendo sued him and they got a 2.1 million dollar settlement against oh my God. Th this this guy I don't know if he's a kid. I don't know. Um, apparently, uh, yeah, $35,000 for each of the 49 Nintendo games found on the site, plus $400,000 in trademark damages. Now, oh my God. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's fucking stupid because apparently as part of the settlement, it was like, well, you could pay Nintendo back in $50 monthly installments, which you'll be paying forever because there's no way you're going to pay off a $2 million uh, settlement really in $50, $50 a month. Like you're not going to do it. I didn't even pull out the calculator and I know you can't do it. I mean, it's going to turn out that you can, right? Because that's the way of the internet, but whatever. So apparently like this last week, there was a story where Nintendo filed again in court and they were like, Hey, this guy doesn't even pay us the $50. And, as when you read this article, you find out that apparently running this dumb ROM website was like this guy's one form of income, and so they shut down the ROM website and made him pay fifty bucks a month. And then he's like, "I don't have any any money." And I this goes back to last week. I was talking with Chris about this hellacious settlement that came down against these guys that leaked like a Pokemon strategy guide that worked at the oh yeah that's right the strategy guy company. And I'm just like. 
I just don't think you should be able to levy a $2.1 million fine against somebody who puts fucking Super Mario Brothers ROMs on a website for download. The end. Like, I just think that's unreasonable. I don't think you should be able to claim that this guy did $400,000 in trademark damages. Fuck you, Nintendo. Goddamn. Like... Your Nintendo is like your nice uncle, but then when he like bring up the wrong thing, he just goes fucking crazy and starts smashing shit. Like it just, I don't know, man. I Nintendo is is very cool about some things, but when it comes to ROMs, they have this this idea that like the ROM industry is destroying their intellectual property rights in a way that that makes them go after people for what I consider to be un. Here's the thing. You might as well have made the settlement $60 billion, right? Like, the guy's never... Double billion. (laughs) Right. He's never going to pay off $2.1 million if he's just a regular guy. Like, he could find... If Elon Musk was running a ROM site, you could get $2 million off of him, right? But, like, some some just jack-off who's working... I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know about this guy's sexual proclivities, but some some just dude that works at a car wash or something, like, you're never going to get $2.1 million off of him. And so... You know, it as a deterrent, it's just like you just signed him up for the Nintendo subscription serve, the Nintendo stay out of jail subscription service. Like that's what happened. That's, really what <laughs> that's all that yeah, happened. Like, Nintendo is notorious for just like annihilating anybody for doing anything. Like yeah, like every time somebody's like, "Hey, we're doing this remake of this thing," they're like, "You're gonna last maybe five minutes after you said that mm-hmm. because somebody's gonna break down your door dressed like Super Mario and punch you in the face with the cease and desist." <laughs> I'm I'm actually really surprised. You remember when we played that Metroid Prime 2D remake thing? And I'm surprised I haven't seen a news story saying, ah, uh, they had to shut it down. Nintendo sent them a cease and desist. They had to shut it down. Maybe they're too focused on trying to get $50 from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the legal team hasn't noticed them yet. I just like the idea of them sending over two guys in the Mario and Luigi like mascot costumes from the Nintendo world to just be like, hey, where's my fucking money? <laughs> like, just Start two- pushing up like, <laughs> between each other yeah yeah just night at the rocks burying this poor guy when he's at work like hey man i gotta make rent you owe us the rent first (laughs) where are the coins we needed the coins it's like what's happening (laughs) mario puts a bunch of a bunch of gold nintendo coins in a sock and starts swinging it around oh boy outside destroying his car where's the money where's the money (laughs) (laughs) give me the fucking money lebowski (laughs) um all right uh another like crazy website news this is actually this one's a, a a real um this is a real tragedy so apparently this guy named uh or there's this yeah this guy no there's this website called poke beach poke beach was an 18 year old website that was devoted to basically hooking people up to trade pokemon cards right like you want to trade your card you want to get another card you put your card on the thing somebody can either buy it from you or they can trade it for you or do whatever um they had what uh four million visitors in may <laughs> of this year oh my god uh like it's a big thing it's been around for 18 years and unfortunately this week it got hacked and while the so what happened was that it was it was a ransom it was a it was an unsuccessful ransomware attack where they were like they were scraping the website to get all of the data to hold it for ransom. But in the midst of doing it, the hosting service for the website noticed this activity and like blocked the attempt to get the information. And so the hackers just deleted the website, like, and the backups to it, like that were hosted on the same server. So like, they just fucking zeroed out this website, and apparently they even had the gall later on to uh, to message the the hosts and say that they should um, uh, that they had some of the data and they would give it back if they sent them some rare Pokemon cards. Like, okay, eat eat a eat all dicks. I want to gather up no. all the dicks in the world, and then I'm gonna make you my settlement is that you have to eat 2.1 million dicks. And you can eat them 50 a month for the rest of your life. That's my that's my sentence to you. Um, 
That's so shitty. Yeah. So yeah, apparently worked on that for decades. The site is apparently still up because it didn't just destroy it. The thing is that all of the archives are gone and like all of the assets are gone. Like they got they got a big chunk of the assets back, but they're not in any folders. If anybody who's ever run like a complicated website yeah. would know that this is like shitty because if you got all your assets back but they were just like in one folder, you'd be like Oh no! This is going to take like years to put back together. It would be ridiculous. Like there's just there's no saving that kind of thing. Yeah. You're so just starting from scratch and making a new site at that point. Yeah. So apparently it's their it's their their passion, and uh, the the guy who ran the website is going to just you know keep soldiering on and try to put it back together again as best they can. Uh, but what a piece of shit! Ransomware is is garbage. Um, and I sent it to you to two point one million dicks all of the penises directly into your face <laughs> uh let's see in other uh uh, uh stupid bulls or in other website trading news um this is just something to i i this was on kotaku this is kind of a sidebar i don't give a shit the wall street journal published this article that's a profile of a 16 year old kid who spent the last 18 months being a shit-ass reseller uh and and they they frame it like what an enterprising young man what a what a what a go-getter like he started with sneakers and pokemon cards and then he got out there and he started buying up consoles and and he's he's managed to make like a hundred thousand dollars so far and his parents are like well it's not legal and like what an enterprising young man this man is and fuck you young man i sent it to you to 10 dicks a month it's not as bad as deleting somebody's website but like Fuck so Twitter is losing their shit over this guy. Oh, really? Like, Cl yeah, Cliff Cliff Blazinski was just like, "Fuck that guy!" <laughs> like, like every every like I found out about it before you sent this to me because like Josh, Ke I followed Josh Keaton, the spectacular Spider-Man voice actor. Okay, and he was like, "Fuck this guy!" And then I looked at the article, or I looked at the Twitter. Um, that he shared and then under that was Cliff Bozinski and then under that was a, like more and more developers being like fuck that kid yeah like, over and over again <laughs> yeah this isn't um like like the thing is that I hate the way that this I mean I don't know I actually read part I read as much of the Wall Street Journal article as I could before I just threw up in my mouth and had to leave but like like you're not smart for buying something of limited stock, jacking up the price and then turning it around and selling it. Like there's a there's a there's a time and a yeah, place yeah. for a resale market, you know, if things are are limited, right? Like if, if it's like a, a piece of art, right? Like, oh, I managed to buy the the young artist's piece of art and then they became very popular and now I can sell it for a lot of money and like, hey, good job, right? But fucking PlayStations and sneakers, like this shit is due to COVID and like supply line problems and like shifting like w you're not you're not savvy you suck right like yeah this is like the guy a terrible person the guy that bought up all the hand sanitizer in like tennessee or whatever and he wanted to oh, sell yeah. it back for like double the price you aren't a smarty pants you're a piece of shit and you know how i know that because when i read the article it talks about how this fucking kid has started to he's like member he's a member of those groups that have like oh. where you pay a subscription and then they like keep a really tight close watch and they give you like suggestions on what bots to use to buy stuff ahead of time like Part of the article was like, oh, right, when Target put the PlayStations on sale, I bought 10 of them before anybody found out when they when they first came up because I was just online like watching stuff and I got alerted to it. And it's like, okay, right, but but Michael, remind correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm pretty sure Target had a one a one PlayStation per customer like pre-order maximum, right? I'm pretty sure you, you also had to have an account to do it. Yeah was the thing like you needed to do a bunch of shit to do it so he clearly like used something bot related and he bought 10 of them or like that's <laughs> the thing it's like this kid this kid had to start with money yeah to, to get that point like he was already doing terrible shit he was doing he's not entrepreneurial at all he's like i paid for it myself I was like how did you pay for 10 ps5s he did by yourself he, at 16 you it's just not doable without already doing something kind of shitty to begin with or having rich parents you no know, in the article they say he started with the sneaker shit right because you know that this shit's been going on with sneakers for a long time where they'll for like a while, yeah. buy up all the sneakers and then sell them online at jacked up price like 
fuck you. Like, you don't provide anything. You provide nothing. You just act as an artificial gatekeeper, and it sucks assholes that you do this. Like, you're just no. you're just taking people's money. You provide nothing you provide absolutely nothing to them you just manage to use these tools and you know what the thing that just fucking blows my mind directly out is that you know he's a student right he's a fucking teenager he doesn't have to go to work he doesn't have no. to pay rent he can sit there and do this shit all the time like i have responsibilities in my life fucko i don't get to just sit around and make money and nor, nor would i want to i hate this stuff so much i hate it and it's like anybody who does this i fucking hate you and like i'm you can tell me all the reasons why you do it and why it's not against the rules but that is the people that pull that shit out are the ones that everybody hates where it's like well the rules don't say anything about throwing a ice cream sundae directly into your crotch. And it's like, right, that's because we all assume that regular people who aren't pieces of shit wouldn't throw ice cream in uh, at my dick. Like, that was just the assumption from life. Ooh, ooh, I hate this kid. <laughs> right yeah, on. It's, it's really shitty. Yeah. Sometimes the internet gangs up on somebody and it's not fair. He should stop. He got a hundred grand. He should fucking walk away. And just fucking live your life and quit scalping shit. Yeah. In additional PS5 make you make noises like Jeff News, um, GameStop has done something crappy. What? Stop the presses. Oh, my God. Who could have saw that coming? I know. This is actually not that big of a story. So apparently, like... GameStop has started doing a thing where if you're part of their shit-ass, uh, their, their um, rewards program uh you'll get like an email notification when there's like playstations in stock before they let anybody else attempt to purchase them like they have a system where if you give them twenty dollars a month then like you get a chance to buy a playstation before anybody else can buy a playstation and i'm not too outraged over this because of course one, of course that one's actually not the worst because that's just them rewarding the people who already had these things kind of thing and like uh, it's not it's not that bad like honestly it would be a lot worse if it was like you you need to buy like you know 20 you need to buy the membership and then also buy like a 900 dollars bundle worth of games or yeah. something before you can even buy it kind of, like something like that but like eh, this isn't so bad like it's still kind of like man but it's just like well you're trying you're trying to alleviate scalpers a little bit like yeah sure it's behind something that you make money off of but it's it's a it's an attempt at least Wait, maybe they are only selling. I know that for a while there, they were only selling bundles as well. So uh, I would be surprised if they're still doing that. To be honest, I wouldn't either. Anywho, other PlayStation news. Let's talk about some good PlayStation news. We got uh, today or yesterday. We got as of recording this. We got the announcement that there's going to be a Ghost of Tsushima uh, director's cut for the PlayStation Five, um, which. Uh, you know, it's standard bullshit, right? Like, uh, it's got the haptic feedback. It's 60 frames per second. It's 4K. But uh, the one thing that's kind of cool is there's going to be some new... Actually, what's weird, one of the features in this trailer is Japanese lip sync. And I thought... Oh, my God. I thought there already so was that's a thing. Japanese lip sync. I There is not. Okay. Uh, that's the thing is every... When they, when they made the game, everything was based on the English voice acting. Oh, uh, okay. So, the vo so it was the opposite, like, issue that, you know, old school dubs had. Right. Like, like instead of you know the Japanese being the, the perfect one and the English one looking like they're talking way late, it was the opposite. It was hysterical, and it caused a lot of people not to play it in Japanese because of it, even though they really wanted to, because they were just they couldn't get past the fact that the lips were not matching it anyway. It didn't match up. But, like I was reading some comments like on a Facebook announcement for it, mm -hmm. and there were people that were like, "I'm gonna buy this purely for the Japanese lip sync," because they were just like, "I want to be able to do it that way," and then do the Kurosawa mode. And just like not have to worry, like be weirded out by their, you know, their mouths not matching. Yeah. The other thing that's pretty cool, is, but uh, the, the biggest thing for me is that there's actually like a new, there's going to be a new single player area, um, uh, Iki Island, which is going to be um, a new chapter with single player um, stories. So not part of the, the multiplayer okay. thing, uh, but it's actually going to be like new single player content, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I really liked playing Ghost of Tsushima. I just don't have the time to... I mean, I guess I could always... Like, apparently you'll be able to transfer your progress, uh, but 
it's like i don't know do i want to jump back in and i that's one of the reasons that i don't really like sometimes i hate this like added dlc stuff where it's just like yeah we added something new to a game you haven't played in six months because you played it when it originally came out and it's like <laughs> i don't know how to play that game anymore i would have to go back um it's no thinking about stuff like this yeah. this is i forgot ghost of tsushima was the reason that i deleted all my fucking save games because i was trying to get around that weird trophy pop and so i deleted my whole save game as well as every other save game on my playstation 4 oh, uh, that's right. because of this stupid game um the other thing is that, I mean, I don't know how much people care about this, but if you got the director's cut of the original, it's going to be uh, um, $10 to upgrade. And if you got the regular cut, it's going to be like $20 to upgrade or something like that. So there is going to be a cost. It's not a free update for um, you. You got to pay. You got to pay for it. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, and it's not too bad, like considering at least for the. Um at least for going from original PS4 to the PS5 one, it's like thirty bucks. Yeah, to do it because you're also getting all the stuff, all the new stuff with it, anyways. Whereas the um, I'm more weirded, I'm more weirded out by the PS4 Ultimate uh, uh, or Director's Cut into PS5 because mm -hmm. that one's like ten bucks, and I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. But like, honestly, if you already have a PS5 by that point, and you didn't have Ghost of Tsushima, you're probably just gonna buy the PS5 one anyways. Yeah, just just do it. Uh, let's see in other Sony news. Um. Housemark uh, has been acquired by Sony. So, uh, yeah, the, they acquired the studio that created Returnal um, for an undisclosed sum. They announced it online. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. Housemark is like I, 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 I. Returnal didn't click with me. So, like, I like Housemark stuff, but it seems like a really weird studio for Sony to buy because they generally tend to buy more like um triple a you know kind of uh, big budget studios and returnal i think it's because they want to they want to stop microsoft from buying everybody because <laughs> like every time like somebody's finished something my microsoft's like on the other side of the fence going like hey do you like money <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we'll get to that in a minute uh but then there was also this actually created a really strange situation because one of the things that they they when they put out their announcement for housemark they put up this thing that it was like playstation studios welcome to the family and it had the logo for housemark on it but before they did that they tweeted one that said blue point games like and it was it, I gotta I gotta stress this wasn't like just the logo for Blue Point. It's like this very specific thing with all these PlayStation characters in the background. It says PlayStation Two is Welcome to Family, and then it had Blue Point on it. And people were like, "Wait, did you guys buy Blue Point?" And it's kind of interesting because none of the games in the background are Blue Point games, um, which would at this point pretty much not? no. I mean, which one did which ones did Blue Point make? Demon Souls remake. Metal Gear HD Collection, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. <laughs> oh, seriously? Uh, Shadow of the Colossus. They did the Shadow of the Colossus remake. Um, oh, wait. Oh, no. There is Demon Souls. There's Demon Souls right there. Uh, how did I miss Demon Souls? Jesus. But I just wanted they made something else that was like a real bit popular, but I guess not. I mean, they've, they've done a lot of like remake work. Um, that's th what they're mainly known for. I'm pretty sure that they're uh, local boys. Because uh, I think I had a friend that used to work there. Let's see. Uh, Shadow Colossus, Gravity, Rush Remastered, the Nathan Drake Collection. They did a bunch of ports. No, I don't think so. I mean. I guess not, yeah. I uh, guess it was just those remasters, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but, so they put this this thing up with Bluepoint, and they quickly took it down. And everybody was like, oh, shit, is, is Sony buying Bluepoint? And then uh, Bluepoint came out and was like, no. We are a, an independent, self-funded studio we're uh, we're not we're not getting bought and so who knows whether this is just like i mean i don't know if this is like a photoshop thing where somebody just turned on they just dragged the wrong thing in and they lined it up they, the, the, whoever did the it was in the graphics department they didn't know who the fuck blue point or house mark is they were just like oh yeah that's the one and then they sent it over to the social media person who also didn't know who the fuck house mark or blue point is and they just posted it or whether there's like this uh, is are they in talks and it's secret we oh, maybe we'll find out um i don't be surprised either way this is the thing like it's i don't know like it's it, we're in a weird position now because where it's um the war the war the console war as people call it used to be more about like you know having 
um, the better, bigger system. But right now, it's it's more about like getting as many studios to stay with you as possible at the moment. So yeah, there's also there's also a big rumor out there, Michael, that Blue Point is making is doing a full remake of uh, MGS, uh, like they really? did for Demon oh, Souls. Okay, well, which they're really in the remasters, so I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if that came up. I mean, the Demon Souls remaster was amazing. So if they want to do that, I I could think of not a better. I could not think of a better company to do an MGS remake than Blue Point because they seem like they've got a good head on their shoulders. They seem to very much like you just s- want to break into there because you know they're here just to be like, where is it? Where is the Metal Gear? <laughs> Actually, I I could I could tell you guys that. Uh, I'd have to look up their look at their directory because I told a story about um, uh, when Matt and I played Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance about this crappy friend of mine who ruined all my D and D campaigns, who I'm no longer friends with. I'm pretty sure that dude works at Blue Point. And I don't want to run into him and then have him get into a big thing, have him ruin my <laughs> my current D and D campaign that's going on in my brain. Um, <laughs> let's see. In other Sony news, uh, th- we we got some new some I don't know. This is an update to that whole like oh Sony we're closing down all the stores, but we're not. Um, so apparently, I think that leaving the PS3 and the Vita store open means that even though the PSP store is actually closing, you c- you won't be able to open it on a PSP. You can still buy titles through a PS3 or a PS Vita and then download them on a PSP. It's just oh, okay. that the actual store is not on there. Uh, why why is the question I don't know. but yeah. i don't know Here, here's the thing if you have a psp and at this point you haven't hacked your psp <laughs> then why are you still using your psp store <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know if the thing is going to be like uh what you're gonna t- two weeks from now you're gonna be like you know what i really should play pursuit for oh no oh no i can't <laughs> do it my only gaming console is a PSP, and I have no other way to access the, the PlayStation Network. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and then, let's see. I think this might be... We've got some more some, some more Sony news, but uh, this is an interesting thing. Uh, Ian Garner of Neon Doctrine went on this huge tirade on Twitter about how, like, Sony sucks when it comes to... And this is very specifically about, like... Okay, so this guy is the head of this this publisher called Neon Doctrine that has published a bunch of games. And we've played some of them on Rage Select. Uh, there was like, um, oh, I, I, I looked it all up and then I totally forgot. Uh, there's There's been a few. They're like an indie publisher. They don't make games, but they play. Well, Yuppie Psycho, that was one of them. But like, so what he is, what they are complaining about is basically like, Sony doesn't tell you if you don't give Sony like 25 grand and you're an indie publisher on their platform, Sony basically determines who gets like featured and who gets put like in big spotlight sections and even like who has the ability to discount their games um, based on really opaque, arbitrary uh, 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 met- metrics, right? That like, you don't really have very much control as a as a as a smaller indie publisher over like trying to get your stuff featured, trying to get like a to put together some kind of launch sale or like get it uh, you know in a certain place. And I this is a weird one to me because I kind of in a in a way I kind of sympathize about like if this is a thing that's easier to do on steam or it's easier to do on xbox or even on the switch or whatnot on the other hand i can look at this kind of through a lens of just like damn man this indie publisher guy really just thinks he's owed the world for putting his games on this platform but the other side of that is like you know if you do all the work to port your game over apparently like getting cert on the playstation is a real archaic like difficult process um you know, like it talks about getting assigned like an account manager and like what if that happens, it's just a question mark. Like you can't even be totally sure that it would happen. But that all of this gets alleviated if you give them a, a huge chunk of money. Um, and I can see how that would be frustrating. On the other hand, I guess I just assumed that all video game platforms were kind of pieces of shit. So <laughs> it was just it, it was the assumption. I thought that, that it was kind of just keeping it was ways of keeping people from just throwing whatever they wanted onto the system the way you do steam yeah kind of thing because uh, according according to the article it's like microsoft apparently runs a similar payment thing is what they is what it says 
Um, but I guess they might be a little more lenient mm -hmm. in the beginning process, I guess, is probably the only reason he's probably not bringing up them specifically. But because I've seen a lot of different takes on this because because I also I found out about this again through Twitter on accident um, prior to you sending this to me. And uh, like there's some people that are like, look, it makes sense because, you know, uh, like it's it's an advertising thing. Like you have to pay for advertising in general. Like that's kind of what this is. Right. Because that's what he keeps mentioning. And other people are just like, well, if they're indie developers, they should get like something that can help them with that. And it's like, well, why? Like, why? Like, well, then, then from there, you have to construe what is considered an indie developer, because there are plenty of indie developers that have a lot of money behind them that you just that you just don't see. So it becomes it becomes a whole thing. It's like, well, what counts is that? So what counts to the war? We shouldn't charge them the twenty five thousand or what? Like, it, it's a, it's a weird. Kind of thing, because yeah, then you end up with something like the Steam Store, where every twenty seconds there's something splattering the new the new area kind of thing that makes it harder and harder to be seen. Plus, plus, it's worth pointing out that like this is an indie publisher. Like all the games on their store, like if you go to their, like they did Yuppie Psycho, they did My Lovely Daughter, they did Simulacra. But if you go to any of these games, they're all made by other companies. They're just published by neon doctrine like yeah. so in a in and, and i guess in a certain way that makes sense right that it would be really frustrating if you were a publisher if you're an indie publisher that has a bunch of developers that are that are giving you content and it's your job to try to get that content put front and center on the playstation store and you can't do it without having to spend like a shitload of money and yeah. and and all the support on the other hand again it's kind of like well that's kind of your responsibility. Like that's on you. There's plenty I, of places that are paying that amount, and there's plenty of other places you can go if you don't feel like dealing with that. Because not everything has to be on everything, right? Like if you if you want to deal with that, then that's up to you. Like Microsoft and Nintendo are super cool with putting on whatever the fuck they want on that right now. Yeah, compared to Sony, so like it's really like you said, it's up to them. It's also an incredibly saturated market. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure that there's no shortage of indie developers, indie publishers coming to Sony like, hey, I got this game, which is why it's all the more inexplicable that Gilson keeps getting to put fucking games on the PlayStation Network. <laughs> He's got twenty five grand laying around somewhere, Jeff. Though, maybe, apparently, maybe that's what he did. Maybe he just put twenty five grand in there, and he, they just keep pimping out his fucking shit games. So um, somebody says, "Put your money where your mouth is." He's like, "Boom, twenty five thousand onto yep. the PlayStation Store." Yep. Uh, last but not least, in our PlayStation Parade, apparently at the moment, this is probably going to get fixed. But at the moment, uh, if you play Doom Eternal and you're on the PlayStation Five, you're about to get boned because apparently. Just like every other fucking game I've seen so far, um, there is a problem transferring save games. Uh, that right now, you cannot transfer a save game from your PS4 Doom Eternal to the PS5 Doom Eternal. Um, oh, okay. This is, again, probably going to get fixed, but as does a, a, a big boy company. And the thing for me is that it's just like, uh, reading back through this article reminded me of how difficult it is like in avengers how you had to like log into the you had to download the ps4 version open the ps4 version like export your save and then get the ps5 version then open that up and then import your save and i don't you haven't really i don't think had uh, uh, much experience with it yet but like no i have i have all three all three ps5 games i've had are the I've, i do exactly that oh Crash no Bandicoot 4 did that spider-man did that as well as avengers like you said no i was gonna say but like but it's just buttery on the series x like you don't have to pick which one yeah. you want you don't have to like you just download it run it and it fucking works um yeah that is the main differences at the moment yeah apparently there's also some problems that some people have had with like actually upgrading to the ps5 version some kind of like store problems where the ps5 version is locked and it's like no give us the money for it it's like no i already own it. it's supposed to be a free upgrade so it's kind of a mess. Okay, Eleven had that issue when I first got it, or when I tried to do it on my PS5. Yeah, I had to fix that too. Yep, um, kind of a mess. Kind of a mess. I'm sure that they'll fix it eventually, but kind of a mess. Um, but speaking of Doom, we found out some more stuff this week about Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is getting a horde mode, a single player horde mode. Ooh. 
uh, which is kind of cool. They're in development right now, and they're basically going to stop the in. They're going to like lay off of the invasion mode, which was a thing where you could be playing through the game and somebody could invade your game like Dark Souls and play one of the demons. And you could fight them and stuff. Sounds kind of stupid. Um, yeah, I forgot that was a thing. Like when you were like, oh, they're not going to do invasion mode as much. I'm like the what mode? I, don't, I forget that I, I I vaguely remember that in the original trailers that they did. Yeah. And uh, they're going to be doing this instead, which I think is a really good idea because horde mode makes sense as long as it isn't just, oops, all marauders, and then I'm going to literally pick up my console, throw it out my window, and just die. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's like the final section of it or something. Yeah. Uh, and then we also got news from it that... Um, uh, another that they've rated another game. Uh, they there was a rating that they had before called Project Two Hundred Two One A, which ended up being this is from the Australian Ratings Council of the Kangaroos or whatever. But like uh, um, this turned out to be the Doom Three VR edition, and then they've got this new one called Project Two Hundred Two One B. People are this could be anything from Doom Eternal VR to you know, something else uh, entirely. Uh, but since QuakeCon is coming up August 19th through the 21st, it'd be interesting to see if it's an actual an actual new thing. One of the rumors is that there is that Machine Games is making a Quake game with both a single player and multiplayer element um, and that it might be that. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm just picturing, though, like a, an entire room full of kangaroos looking at games being <laughs> like, what do you think, mate? <laughs> all talking like kangaroo jack. I could, uh, I, I, actually, when you were saying that, I was picturing Tank Girl. I was picturing Ice, ice Tea. <laughs> Ice T, Ice Q. That's even better. Yeah, on the Ice, ice T and his kangaroo friends. Ice T kangaroo. Uh, yeah. Uh, and with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and take a break. When we come back. We're gonna whip through some of these. Uh, some of these are more important than others, and we're gonna just go through them all real fast. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break, uh, refill our beverages, and we'll see you in just a moment. And it's time, Michael, to talk about the most exciting things that happened this week in the news. Gotcha. There's two stories this week that were the most exciting to me of all time. And the first one is that Control is getting not one, but two uh, uh, additional titles. So apparently, oh my God. The Remedy is working on both a, 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 like for far in the future, they're working on an actual sequel to Control. Great. Couldn't be happier. Love it. 100% on board, but then they're also working on, uh, maybe coming out pretty soon, this code name Condor, which is a multiplayer action game set in the Control universe, um, which seems really weird. <laughs> yeah, like, how does that... Okay. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that would work. I mean, I like the action. I think the Control is probably... I, I think the Control is probably the best action that Remedy has done since maybe like Max Payne, just on a pure gameplay input level, right? I um, see that. Yeah, because Quantum Break has a lot of issues with it. At least for, for, to me, it had a. It just didn't feel like like it feels like the prototype to what controls uh, controls are. Yeah, kind of thing. Like it's it's much tighter with uh, controls. I keep. I'm trying not to say controls. Controls. <laughs> <laughs> controls inputs <laughs> feel much tighter <laughs> than quantum breaks controls right no i i and, I, and plus uh, quantum break like with all that time stuff i don't feel like it would translate well into a multiplayer thing whereas the way the control is like you know flying and push and grab and throw those things could always i mean i i actually think that it's probably going to be a little bit more grounded than that i think it'll probably end up playing probably like the ghost of tsushima multiplayer where it's like you get kind of part of the abilities but maybe not all of them 
I don't know. I can see that being a thing, yeah. All I know is that I'm really excited to give it a try. Almost as excited as I am about Hideo Kojima signing a, a letter of intent to work with Microsoft on the, his next project. Uh, that, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Um, really cool. Yep, because apparently that's, that's kind of all that we've got. Uh, but I like – you know what I like is I like – uh, I like the ubiquity of Xbox's architecture, uh, the ease apparently to work with, and I like the fact that Microsoft appears to just be throwing like dump trucks of money at people to do whatever the fuck they want, and I like it when Hideo Kojima can do whatever the fuck he wants because then we get Norman Reedus Walks Around Simulator 2019, which some people don't like, but I think is the shit, so... <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing about uh, Kojima Unleashed, as we've been calling this, this new time frame, uh, because prior to that, Konami was constantly being like, but why would you want to do something like that? Whereas when Sony was like, yeah, do whatever the fuck you want, he's like, I will. And then he fucking <laughs> went to town. <laughs> this game is going to be so far it's up, uh, so far up its own ass, it's going to turn inside out and then go back up its own ass and turn right side out again. Uh, like, I'm thinking pea grenades. And somebody was like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I want to. Oh, I want. I want the Death Stranding director's cut. I kind of want to. I've just been talking about how I don't have time to play anything. I kind of want to go play Death Stranding all over again. I think in 2020 it was a little bit much when it came to the like nobody it will go outside. Thing. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, the most like amazing like <laughs> accidental like 2020 game ever made. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, it's just so perfect. But I love. I love that game as much. Yeah. As. We, me and you both know it's so far up its ass. Oh yeah, of like anything he's ever made. Absolutely, like, the mechanics are solid for the most part, minus like one or two things. But even then, it's like, man, I love. I play that thing, f fucking hours. Yeah, yep. Uh, let's see. In other Xbox news, uh, we got this is really interesting, man. Xbox is really going for it with the cloud gaming because this week um at it, the cloud xbox cloud gaming what used to be uh, whatever the it was called before i forget because i'm stupid now um but xbox cloud gaming has x cloud x cloud x cloud has now moved into browser support so you could just open up a browser and go to like i think it's like um xbox.com forward slash play and log into your xbox account and just start up an instance of x uh, whatever games are on your xbox account running on the upgraded hardware that we reported on last week so like they're the they're it's the equivalent of running on a series x in your browser and because it's a browser it means that it'll also work on um iphones at this point Oh wow! Uh, because it's able to circumvent the dumb I iPhone store, the stupid uh, Apple bullshit by just being a browser app, right? Like you don't have to have a store; you just yeah. open up a browser and you go to this thing. Something that I feel like Apple should have cracked down on, will crack down on, might crack down on, but I don't even surprised, damn. But for the moment, it's crazy. I'm just waiting for the day, Michael, when the Xbox One, my my Xbox One launch edition that is sitting in your apartment, is able to download an X Cloud app and play the fucking new Halo, in spite of the fact that it's fucking like 15 year old hardware or whatever, 10 year old actually, hardware. I actually kind of want to test that whenever it does happen. Yeah. Because now that I have a Series X, I can now just like compare and contrast them very easily it's funny i actually loaded up i was looking at it today because a man and i played um lego builders journey on geforce now because geforce uh -huh. now has been upgraded to have um dlss uh ray traced uh uh, uh support for the oh, okay. instances and i loaded up um this game called a medieval do you do you remember the game dusk do you remember that dusk game uh vaguely it's like i a remember hearing about it yeah quakey style game well a medieval is like the hexen or the heretic equivalent of like dust to to kind of quake right oh okay uh but it has ray tracing and i i, I loaded up an instance of it on geforce now that is a twitchy game that runs at 60 frames per second. Next time you're at my house, I want you to try it out because, like, I wasn't getting shit. I wasn't getting enough input lag. If 
I think that the input lag was so low that my brain was just canceling it out like on the fly um, because I felt like I was just playing a regular video game, but it felt like my computer was twice as good as my computer currently is. So <laughs> I don't know, okay. man. They're really they're really going for it. They're really they just really going are. for it. Um, in addition, I was, at a, I was oh. at a friend's house and they had the um, that controller thing that makes their phone kind of look like a Switch almost. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot what it's called, but like he was showing me how it worked on his phone and it was yeah i was fascinated by it because it, it didn't feel that bad like he, he, it was like a bmx game they showed me just real quick and i was like oh that's like microsoft is going for like it's going for like what stadia really wanted to be mm-hmm. but like it didn't give up like midway and they're still going and i'm really excited to see how that plays out i did try loading up i actually bought an on-sale copy of cyberpunk 2077 on steam and loaded it up on the geforce now uh instance and jacked up every setting to ultra and tried playing it and i was like nope still a big piece of shit uh <laughs> like it wouldn't it was it's was very janky it would barely play like it was very the frame rate because the thing is that those GeForce inst- those GeForce Now instances are fast, but if you jack everything up and the game is unoptimized, uh, then you you just you same as if you would do it on your own computer. Um, well, speaking of good frame rates, Microsoft Flight Simulator is actually getting a huge update to boost its kind of like core like rendering and 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 computing uh, like code uh, to make it literally run orders of magnitude faster than it currently does on the same hardware like there was a live stream where they were running it and it was running at 40 fps and then they did the update and it was up to and then it went up to 60 after the update five uh part of this is probably due to the fact that flight simulator is actually going to be on the xbox series x and series s july 27th so they probably had to do some actual like optimization to try to get it to run as fast as as humanly possible on those um can you imagine though? Does that mean? Does that mean? Does that mean that then you can do a Microsoft Cloud uh, instance of Microsoft Flight Simulator? Does that mean you can run the current Microsoft Flight Simulator on your fucking cell phone? <laughs> Technically, but I don't know how well it would work. I guess is the thing. Yeah, it just depends on your bandwidth. Um, in any case, or the phone too. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, it's see, it shouldn't matter what the phone is because it's just running in a browser. Like all of the rendering is happening off site, so it's just like streaming. No, but it has it has to run the browser. <laughs> well, the there thing. is that. Yeah, like that's that's the thing is the browser has to be able to keep up with what's going on within the browser. Well, yeah, I didn't want to run it on my like my 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 uh, 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 my razor <laughs> no, <exactly. laughs> or anything. <laughs> my yeah, old BlackBerry, yeah. yeah. Dude, how cool would that be if you could get? Is that the new thing? Is like trying to get streaming stuff to run on older and older phone hardware until you've got like it'll, your. It's going to be the new Desert Run Doom. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like except now it's like a, a black and white Nokia running Doom Eternal on its black and white LCD screen. <laughs> uh, uh, well, no matter how much you upgrade your hardware, you apparently will never be able to run Cyberpunk 2077 because there was recently a conference where the CEO of uh, CD Projekt Red, Adam Kaczynski, Kaczynski, I don't know how to say that, said that they now believe Thanks. that Cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> is running at a quote unquote satisfying level. So apparently their focus moving forward is going to be not on optimizing the game any further, but on adding in customer requests, features, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, which I'm sure is not great news for anybody still trying to run like a stock PS4 or Xbox Series X or uh, Xbox One um, on it, because as near as I could tell, it still kind of runs potato style on those consoles. It comes down to the fact that they're just like, look, you guys, you guys either gave up on the original versions of these, or you just want new features at this point. Yeah, yeah. and they probably just they're banking more on the idea that people want more content than they do bugs not like being completely ironed out, which isn't like the worst game, like uh, not the worst, the worst um, gamble. Yeah, because you know more and more people are getting are finally getting their hands on on these newer consoles. As well as some some of those people have given up on that have at least been trying to get the newer versions of the past consoles. Right. So at, at that point, they're really just trying to get... Because also, they're coming out with the new ones, 
eventually the PS5 and the actual Series X versions. So they're going to want to be like, hey, they want to they're going to want all the trailer platform things are like new content coming when it comes out or something like they right that's way a way better gamble than just trying to keep the ps4 from exploding when you're trying to like make sure your character's not nude on a bike (laughs) yeah it's a real shame uh let's see speaking of a big shame uh, it appears that bioware is not going to really be featured in the ea play live that we're seeing this month oh did you all forget that ea wasn't at e3 and that they're technically doing their like big game show this month as opposed to last month um no I forgot entirely <laughs> yeah apparently Shit. bioware put out a tweet saying we're we're hard at work creating the next dragon age and mass effect games and some exciting stuff to show with uh star wars the old republic while we won't be showing anything at ea play live be sure to check out uh, the star wars the old republic live stream at 12 p.m uh for info on what's to come which was kind of interesting because um star wars the old republic is getting a new uh a new expansion and a, basically an, a revamp to kind of the way that their whole class and skill system works, where apparently, like, you're just going to choose whether you're, like, tech or Jedi, or, like, tech or force. And then you can kind of mix and match stuff in there. So there's not incredibly discrete classes. Like, you get a little bit more open-ended, mixy-matchy uh, kind of skill set going on. I oh, okay. was kind of amazed that, Star Wars The Old Republic is still there, but honestly, every time I read a story about it, it kind of makes me want to go back and try it again. <laughs> I, yeah, I also forgot it existed until somebody, yeah, until, I, again, I saw this on Facebook, somebody was like, I'm kind of excited about this. I'm like, oh yeah, The Old Republic is actually, exists and is still playable. Because I, it's that thought process I have where it's like, I thought it got canceled like a year or two ago, if not more, but it's doing well enough that it, it keeps getting more stuff on it. Oh, that was Anthem. Anthem got canceled a, a year ago. Um, uh, let's see. Another EA news. Uh, we got a listing of the schedule. Apparently, EA has just decided to dominate all of July, sort of. Uh, July 8th, which is um, this week, uh, they're going to have the future of first-person shooters, which is going to be about Apex and Battlefield 2042. Uh, July 13th, they're going to have EA Loves Independent Studios, which is going to have um, Yosef Ferris of Hazelight, who did It Takes Two, and uh, o- Olav Redmalm of Zoink, who made that Lost in Random, which I think is that dice game that isn't out yet. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, let's see. July 19th, there's going to be some Madden bullshit. Uh, July 20th, there's going to be some more EA Sports. So at least this time, we don't have to like live stream this stuff and then have all of everybody from Rage like be like, boo, boo sports. And it, I used to be very much boo sports and then eventually became a thing like, guys, we all know that the best parts of EA are the beginning and the end and that the middle is fucking esports. Just tune out. Just go make a grilled cheese. Uh, yeah. That's always been like that for a long time because the end is always like, look at what we have coming up, and then it's like a Star Wars announcement or something. Right. And then July 22nd, there's going to be their full-on EA Play Live uh, street, and we don't actually know what's going on there. Probably not Dragon Age. I mean, well, obviously not Dragon Age or Mass Effect. Uh, so and not not uh, Star Wars Squadrons. That's done. There'll probably be some Battlefield 2042 but you know what there probably is going to be, this is, this is based on something from last week, is that um, there's a report from GamesBeat that apparently they claim to have some insider information saying that like there was a rumor that the, one of the things that was going to be shown was a Dead Space property, and this rumor is that it's going to be a reboot of Dead Space from the beginning, kind of in the vein of some of the other stuff that we've seen. Oh. Um, they're just going to, to go back and kind of start over. Apparently, when you read the the um, GamesBeat article, it talked about how they were like taking inspiration from the, like the RE2 remake, where they're going to try to kind of keep the core, but then modernize it, add some new stuff, uh, just kind of jazz it up and get it back out there. Oh, okay. They want to make sure that people can put Thomas the Tank Engine as smoothly as possibly yes. into the games. Yeah. Yes. They want to make sure that you can swap out um, um, uh, Isaac for Lady Dimitrescu. Uh, or Lady Dimitrescu. Yes, exactly. uh, yeah. In lingerie. In mom jeans. Yes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Are you you're are you a Dead Space fan, Michael? 
Yeah, I'm a big Dead Space fan, but the issue is that like I would rather them keep continuing the story mm-hmm. than to do a, a reboot. But like I won't say no to it. Like I actually like that would be kind of cool because I'm 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 really glad that I have the Series X now because all those games are backwards compatible on it. Right. And I was just worried that it was going to be more and more difficult to be able to play these games. But I was also worried that EA gave up on Dead Space outright. Like all of us were, uh, especially after what happened with three. So if they decided to reboot it, at least that means that they're willing to um, to use the series again. I think uh, when I was reading the GamesBeat article, <coughs> um, I think that, again, EA put out uh, the Jedi Fallen Order. Is that the, Was that the last one? Yeah. Uh, the Jedi Fallen Order did well enough that they were like, hey, wait a minute. I guess people do want single player video games and they will pay for them. And it's like... Fuck you. We've been saying that. We're yelling it for years. <laughs> Everyone has been saying this for so long. I never heard anyone say that. Yeah. Cuz you remember that they you remember when Dead Space 3 didn't sell as well as they wanted to, they made Visceral make Battlefield Hardline. Oh, yeah. gross. Gross. And then gross. they just shut them down like right after. Yep. Uh, let's see. We got some news about Diablo 4. I'm not going to talk too much about this. There's actually a huge blog post about this that was published on Blizzard's website that has some cool renders and some kind of some some technical stuff. Um, I think Diablo 4 looks looks like a banger, man. I like the kind of they've, they've gone to this real gritty, detailed style of um, of characters. They've got this kind of open world that they're looking at. I like some of these enemy renders that they show. Um just fucking like make it already blizzard like uh, <laughs> i don't know uh again you want a blizzard we don't really know what they're doing in general anymore yeah like I, I i really like all this stuff like i like these i like these guys i like the the enemies that they show it seems like diablo 3 you know what it's funny because i feel like blizzard spent so much time being like well diablo 3 is too colorful oh you guys are just a bunch of babies and as diablo 4 is dark as fuck like <laughs> it's desaturated and horrifying and there's like a i'm looking at a render of a guy with a giant spider attached to his back and he's got a lumpy fucking horrible shit going on on him and so yeah i th- i but i like uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of customization that they're doing there's a lot of like um customization on the individual player stuff and it looks really cool i guess they just they just fucking need to put something out man like when was the last new blizzard game that wasn't a remake no, overwatch i, I, I want to <laughs> say it was overwatch yeah yeah other than that they've just been really focused on esports yeah so uh well speaking of esports we actually have a, a news story this week about uh chinese censorship that does not involve blizzard it's oh, kind okay. of amazing. It does, though, involve Arc System Works, which I didn't see coming. Um, huh. So apparently, you remember when we were playing uh, the new Guilty Gear, and it had that giant like um, that giant like wiki of information about the plot. Um, there's actually a part in there that talked about it's, it says like the Federation of China has further expanded their borders to encompass nearby regions with lower populations or no, no, wait, that's the, that's the edited one. The original one says China has further expanded their borders to encompass Uyghur, Tibet, inner Mongolia, Mongolia, and Siberia. Um, and apparently they took that out and made it a much more generalized thing. There's also some references to, uh, what Taiwan, um, that they took out as well. This is just like a, I I I fucking hate this shit. Like this this stupid sensory bull sensorious bullshit just to not hurt China's fucking feelings. Like I don't care about China's feelings. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's frustrating because it's like it's a money thing and it's yeah. Like people are willing to like every fucking company on the planet is willing to overlook the insanity that is China at this point just for a few just for more money and yeah it's really the thing that annoys people the, or annoys me the most because it's it's a like it's a free speech is, issue and it's just like well we're here so it doesn't matter what's said here they're like but we got to update it everywhere like it just doesn't matter like even like even though it only like like the, if, if they only did it over there like no one would bat an eyelash but the fact that they consistently do it to every fucking area is what really frustrates the hell out of me yeah 
I just wish that China would quit being such a fucking baby because it's like, oh, did you mention that Taiwan exists? Oh, you can't do We won't buy your game. It's like to me, it's the equivalent of like the people online who won't buy uh, who won't buy like, you know, um, um, Tokyo Mirage sessions because there is a, they, they they fucking you can't look right up the skirt of the 16 year old girl that's like the main character and it's just like well the, you're not gonna get my money if I can't be the worst person and I'm just like I fucking hate it I don't know it's it's all censorship and I don't like it but it frustrates me because it's it's not like because that's sort of like you know sexual censorship that's fairly common but these are just like places yeah and you're and you're just like you're not allowed to say that place exists it's like yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, it's really insidious. It's really insidious. Um, in other insidious news, uh, I think I don't know if you and I talked about this, but hum- did, yeah. Humble Bundle made a change a while back, where basically they were taking, like they they had removed the ability to basically expand the donations to various charities to the point where basically like no money went back to humble bundle and people didn't like that because they basically capped it at like 15 or 20 percent of your of your cost goes to charities and then they there was a thing where there was a backlash and they said no okay uh we're not we're not backlashing or we're we're not going to do that and now they're back and they're going to do it again uh so the minimum amount for humble bundle for the actual humble organization that is doing the stuff is going to be between 15 and 30%. Uh, you can't slide it all the way to basically give all the money to charity. Now, in a certain way, I, I like when we talked about this last time, I kind of get this, like based on the fact that Humble Bundle is now like a company. And like part of this is them trying to get money to like purchase exclusives or things to draw more people into the Humble store. But... On the other hand, it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like what once, what once was a charity is now a business, and I can see how that sucks. I don't really use Humble anymore, but uh, it's just me. I don't really use it anymore either, but like it's it's the kind of thing that, like it sounds scummy, but like it, it makes sense because it's like we got to keep the doors open when we're not getting enough to keep the doors open is, is what it feels like. Yeah. The issue was that the original limit was so fucking small yes. for for the charities. It was like, well, you're not a charity anymore. Right. Because it was like it was like I don't even remember how small it was. It was like what, fifteen percent for charity and that was it? Yeah. And I was like, Are you fucking stupid? Like that's there who would want to do that at all? <laughs> like at that point. Like it's part of your business model. Like your business model yeah. was giving money to charity, and if you stop doing that, then you become a different type. Then you become Steam that just happens to give a little money to charity, and a lot of people aren't going to be down with that. But yeah, it was it was really stupid, and like at le- and doing it the opposite at least that like having humble bundles like there's a minimum for fifteen percent. That's fine. Like if if you can give like seventy percent or something took charity i'm i'm not gonna fight you on that but if you're if you're if you limit the charity to like 15 percent, then you're fucking stupid <laughs> yeah uh let's see we got some trailers uh this is this trailer is pretty much the exact same trailer the final fantasy pixel remaster trailer except that this one has a release date which is july uh, we found out that the first three of the so this is kind of fucked up the first three of the final fantasy pixel remaster games one two and three are going to be coming out in july 28th but that same day four and uh final fantasy four and five are going to be delisted off of steam and it's like why don't you delist those when the four and five come out with their pixel remasters, which we actually don't currently have a date for. So that's so stupid. What? Uh, oh no, five and six, not four and five, five and six. Um, yeah. We also, I noticed in part of this trailer that um, uh, the text that they're using on, they're not using like pixel text. They're using like, um, like a very smoothed out font for um, like the individual, the hit points and the names and the spell names and stuff like that. And I kind of wish that they would just use like the, just the big chunky font like they use for when you get hit and stuff. Like one font, one font to rule them all and not like this other weird font, but I don't know. That's the thing about like when they do stuff like that, remasters, Yeah, that the fonts tend to be the ones that, you know, don't get like a better treatment because even the the ace attorney ones are like that where you're like it just feels weird not having the pixely kind of like wording yeah 
Yeah. Uh, let's see. Michael, did you watch the trailer for Space Punks? I did. It's just like Twin Stick Borderlands. <laughs> yep. Twin Stick Borderlands meets Diablo. But it's by Flying Wild Hog, the, the folks who brought us uh, the modern masterpiece that is Shadow Warrior. So... I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, it has potential. Yep. There's a Mantis dude. I know everybody's like, Jeff's gay for that Mantis dude. I'm like, yeah, yeah. The fact that you brought him up, I am just, I didn't want to, I wasn't going to say nothing. Yeah, you know. There's four characters. There's like, you know, the kind of handsome leader guy. There's like kind of brawny dude. There's the Mantis guy. There's like a lady with the big slashy slash. It looks so much like Borderlands that it's it makes me wonder if, if, Flying Wild Hog was like, man, I, we've been waiting for them to make a Diablo Borderlands for years. We'll just make our own one. Fuck you guys. We'll just make our own Fuck Borderlands. You, yeah. Um, Coke money. So it's going to be an online one. I don't know. This looks pretty cool. I trust Flying Wild Hog to bring me uh, giant action and, you know, quippy quips. So it could be fun. It's got like, it's got offspring in the background of the trailer. And it's like, oh, was that what that song was? Oh man, yeah, it was. Um, I want to say it was uh, original prankster. That's what it was. God, there was a weird owl song that was kind of close to it that I kept. I was trying to figure out what that song was, and <laughs> oh man, okay, good, good, good. Uh, we got we we're very light on trailers this week. We got a trailer. Loki's in Fortnite. That's a thing that happened. Uh, yeah, he's being put in everything. He's yep. going to be put in a, a Simpson short. <laughs> a few days oh is he yeah they made a, a simpson like it was uh, I, they um the disney plus thing tweeted out about it and they're like watch the new uh disney simpson short with loki in it it's got like loki on the poster it, it, it tries to look like the um i want to say the end game poster mm. or something like that oh yeah all of the simpsons guys is different marvel people but it's I, like a short they're releasing i saw that i just assumed that it was um uh, fan art <laughs> yeah you would but. you would assume that until they actually like it's written on there yeah uh, july 7th i think is when that comes out all right and then last but not least we got a, a brief trailer michael i think i might have accidentally sent you a 10 minute version of this uh, there's actually just a minute and 15 long trailer for the big streets of rage for survival mode expansion that has like you know, like a, it has like a horde mode. There's like four new characters. There's a bunch of new stuff in there. There's a lightsaber. That's pretty cool. Um, I was a big, 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 big fan of Streets of Rage 4. So I I want to check it out. I want to check it out. Yeah. Um, if you guys don't have Patreon, we did finish our actual playthrough of, of the original um campaign i guess mm -hmm. yep and that's all coming out on july 15th so maybe we'll have to do a patreon where we do the horde mode or something like that uh the mr x nightmare dlc which is great because i feel like even if you if you got the original on game pass you can give them a little money for an expansion if you like the game that much bada bing bang boom that's really good guys uh confirming something last week that chris wasn't as excited about but i know i can get michael excited about uh last week we got a a, a, a listing for castlevania advance um by the australian classification board there was those kangaroos again um and then this week it looks like korea went ahead and rated it for the pc which is going to be a collection of circle of the moon harmony of distance and aria of sorrow which is fucking great because outside of running them on an emulator or having an original game boy advance there's not really a way to play these and they're so good i love these games so much that i want to play them even having an, an, an original or even having a Game Boy Advance was still difficult because even those games are really hard to find. Yeah, because they're so popular, and and it's even worse, you know, with the fact that like you know they haven't been released on anything outside of me. Like I think one of them was released on the Wii U because I yep. had it on the Wii U, and and it was by itself, <laughs> so it wasn't even like you could buy them all. And you know, I wish like you. I wish, you know, the DS ones could be done in the same way, but I don't really know what they could do with the touchscreen stuff if, if they did something like that. Because one of the games is have uh, one of the sequels to, um, I think it's the sequel to Ario Sorrow. Mm. Um, it's Dawn of Sorrow, which is the, is the last cr chronological uh, Castlevania original timeline game. It was heavily, heavily about the, um, the touchscreen because you had to do like spells and shit with it. Oh uh, yeah, that was with uh, Soma. The second one was Soma. 
Yeah, because uh, Soma was the reincarnation of Dracula. Mm-hmm. Because he's... Hey, that's, don't... That's the reason it's the final ending. People haven't s- played it yet. Don't spoil it for him, Michael. Don't spoil well, it. Well, I was talking about so the second old. one, because the second one tells you that outright. <laughs> <laughs> but I already saw it as not, but... Don't, uh, don't, I don't, s- don't spoil an 18-year-old video game, Michael. Come on, gah! <laughs> I'm really excited though because a lot of these games, Ario Sorrow, had a uh, had a Julius Belmont mode, mm. so I'd be excited to do that again. They're so good. They're all so good. Uh, let's see. We got a full on release date for Near Reincarnation, uh, which is that phone that Near phone game. Sorry to anybody who just heard Near and they were like, "Whoa!" Uh, <laughs> J- July 28th. It's going to be coming out on phones, and there's all kinds of stuff that you could buy. It's a free to play gotcha thing. I actually got invited into the, like the beta for it, uh, but then they were like, "Oh, it's only a week long," and I was like, "Oh, well, I'll just wait for it to come out." So, <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. And then last but not least, we got some fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> there was this really silly b- b- uh, Bidoof Day announcement. The Bidoof. The Bidoof. Um, that ended up being a like a Rickroll, but it's like a custom. It's like a it's like a it's a cover of Never Gonna Give You Up that's all about Bidoof. Um, so like. Yeah, it was like, oh, there's going to be a big announcement. And then it's just this song about Bidoof with these custom lyrics. Uh, yeah, never going to doubt Bidoof. Now I'm going to shout Bidoof. Everybody loves Bidoof and it loves you. Like, like this is literally oh a this YouTube video. So, um, like this up. yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. Oh my God, Nintendo. You just, you just, you paid Rick Astley the money. From from that fifty dollars you got from that rom guy, <laughs> right? That was and why they're supposed to give him a second fifty dollars when the when the video came out. And then that guy didn't pay him, and they were like, "Hold on, Rick, hold on, we'll we'll get Mario to go over there and get your fifty dollars." You made us. You made us give. A g- <laughs> you made us like give up on Rick Astley, and he hates us for us. Though <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So that's silly. Uh, another silly thing. Is that apparently on the PC somebody has done the work to make Final Fantasy 13 look really, 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 really good by adding in like 4K textures and like 1080p fully rendered movies. They took like the the model from the cutscenes that was like a much higher res model and then made it like the default model in the game. Like this is a Nexus oh, wow. mod thing that you could do to like like literally make Final Fantasy 13 the the final fantasy that people are least interested in look and play really 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 good there's apparently like actually a lot of mods for these so um but yeah so i don't know uh it's kind of interesting it call me back when you get final fantasy 13 2 running really 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 good um and then last but not least i don't know if you saw this michael but um did you see this this is a really weird thing so apparently you know when you used to boot up the playstation and it brought up the playstation symbol it's like you know bring yeah. zhung. so apparently um if you booted up the bios of the playstation in like the wrong way it turns out that that playstation logo was a 3d image this entire time and oh if my god if you error out the boot up process you could literally use like console commands to move it and turn it and you could see like what it looks like from the back like it was literally a 3d object that was looked at like from just this one particular angle and it made the little p with a little s behind it but apparently like this whole time it's been a fucking an actual 3d object which is crazy what the fuck yeah that's amazing yeah it's pretty insane. That's so much more impressive now <laughs> than looking at it because it's like, oh, because that means that yeah, that means that this, they had to model that and the PlayStation had to run it every time, mm-hmm. which like at that at that point would have been really impressive. Yeah, but I don't know why they didn't tell anybody. <laughs> right, right, but you never knew. It was just something that some fucking crazies over at PlayStation did a million years ago. Um, somebody though, definitely, there's a Twitter person who was like. Uh, the PS1 BIOS logo actually is a 3D model, means you can view it from some really cursed, forbidden angles. Because <laughs> it does kind of look like a, like a cursed uh, uh, image. I don't know. I already get in with that stuff. Uh, well, hey, we got time. Let's do some got questions. We got time. I think this is the we- earliest we've ever finished news in, what, a decade? Yeah, and I didn't even cut anything out. It was That was all the news I pulled up. 
So, hey, look at that. There's finally time. There's finally. We're just going to make kangaroo jokes for 23 minutes and not read any yes, questions. Just kangaroo jokes. <laughs> Let's talk about the plot of Kangaroo Jack. Let's. And how he's only in like three minutes of the <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's see. Our first question this week comes in from Vanish Knight, who says, "Hello, Jeff and Michael. Have we reached a point? These are these are these questions are all uh, a month old or more. But have we reached a point where a publisher or developer releases a game that is not fully materialized, uh, has come to hurt them rather than benefit them? Is that is that is, uh, this is worded a little weird, but I'm just going to say that. Especially, have we come to a point?" Where if a publisher releases a game that's not fully done, that it can actually uh, hurt them as opposed to either be ignored or actually in some cases be a benefit because then they get to have their whole redemption arc, right? People buy it and then they get to go back and add and add and finish the fucking game. And that is from uh, Vanish Knight. So, I mean, I'm assuming that this is obviously a question post-Cyberpunk, right? Um, be post-Cyberpunk, post-Avengers, post-Anthem... <laughs> like it's, the thing is that we are at that point where a lot of games are coming out super unfinished and before you didn't have to before you just had to accept it you just had to accept that you had to buy seven different versions of street fighter 2 <laughs> whereas now you gotta like fucking now it comes out and you're like well they'll for, surely they'll fix it with this patch but now people are now yelling at developers <laughs> <laughs> yeah like non-stop being like why isn't this fixed why isn't this fixed so it's become this super double-edged sword of like well you get your game out but it might be broken in a way that you did not expect or, right or it might not have enough content in a way you did not expect and so now you have people on twitter yelling at the game developer role how come you haven't fixed this how come you haven't fixed that even if they're just talking about the sandwich they had that morning <laughs> kind of thing right yeah, it's interesting. I I still though think it's going to take the problem is what's interesting about it is that um like I kind of think of game development in like uh in kind of three different buckets, right? You've got like your big huge AAA games, you got your like smaller indie slash like smaller project games, and then you've got what I like to call uh steam garbage, just full on shit trash uh like yeah. the the fire so okay full-on shit trash is broken and we don't give a crap because it's either just like hentai boobies or some asset flip or like you were stupid if you bought that in the first place or some weird yeah. r russian game that's like a grand theft auto clone but it's got some kind of weird color in it or i don't know or like it's russian meme game right like if you bought that and you expected it to be okay fine but like here's i was looking through the the recent releases from this year and the thing is that i think that the i think that the difference here is that i don't remember that many indie games because we actually play a fair amount of like not fully triple a games on rage select and most of them are pretty done like most of them are are complete um in a way that like you know they're not broken like they run pretty well they've got full assets they're not like you know uh, I've never played an indie game that ended up being well. Actually, no, that's not true. There were some problems. I feel like in the PS4 era with like Unity games, and I feel like sometimes you see games that are on the Nintendo Switch. And this may be a little weird for me to say that I would consider to be unacceptable in their quality level. Like I, I gotta be honest with you. I was talking to you about this. I downloaded the demo for Monster Hunter um, uh, Stories Two, and. Yeah. The frame rate in it is uh, fucking atrocious. Like it's, it was jittery. Like it was just, it was stuttery, right? Like you would expect if you were trying to run something on hardware that wasn't good enough to run it. And it like that. And what was the the weird ass game? Which weird ass game? The the Twin Peakish type. Uh, Deadly oh, Deadly Permission. Deadly Permission Two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah that one was notorious for having just yeah. a terrible frame rate on that on that and it was only on that console but what's weird to me is that i feel like the switch gets a real uh pass with this stuff where it's like no i mean this should not be except like like some of the um i remember when i saw like the like the version of um uh the witcher right the witcher 3 that you get on oh, the yeah. switch like it's not a very good version of the witcher 3 but nobody's holding nintendo's feet to the fire to be like why are you letting these really or like the uh, doom 
There was uh, some of the, I remember looking at so, uh, Mortal Kombat, I think, was yeah, kind of crappy. Mortal Kombat 11 is the one I remember the most because the backgrounds don't move. Oh, right. Because when you, like, because the game, like, every game that they make for those, like, the backgrounds are these very important, like, you can throw things at people yeah. sort of thing. Like, the Robot Factory is, like, the most jarring mm. to play Mortal Kombat 11 on the Switch for because I, I think I, I want to say Hilario had it because I can't remember who had it. But we played it, and I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is unacceptable. Like, if this was, like, a 3DS game, because Street, Street Fighter um, 4 for the 3DS had the same thing. Mm. But that made sense, because it, it was a 360 game being put onto a 3DS. Right. Where this is, like, I was like, this is just asinine. Like, why, like, like, why would you want this version of this game at all? Because I play, because I have fighters, I have drinkable fighters on, on the, the Switch, and it doesn't nearly have the same issue in that sort of sense. Right. Everything looks very, it looks really good on that system still. So it's like, why do, why are we accepting, you know, this terrible MK11 to this? Like, I don't know. I, I guess because the people who really want those games really want the best looking ones. So they don't ever notice that even happens. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, I guess I put that as a point in the column of like, nobody really cares because I would consider some of those switch ports to, straight up be broken like or it, of an of an unacceptable quality level like it's one of those things where it's neat that you can yes it is neat that you can play it on the switch like that's cool i get that yeah. but it's like you know the level of quality i consider to need to be higher like in a lot of ways what's happening on the switch with some of the games that we've just laid out is the same thing that's happening with cyberpunk 2077 on the ps4 but people are not mad at nintendo or the publisher or any of these companies for putting out what is essentially like a bad port it reminds me a lot of how um there were like the the wii version right the wii version of the game of the 360 game that was like yeah. bad you know or blurry the PS2 one, right you know, like because the wii and the ps2 one were always like damn near the same one just there's some motion controls maybe yeah the wii one but yeah no one ever like said like you know why does this game look awful on this but I don't know. Like, I guess it's because the I, there's the understanding that Nintendo isn't as strong to begin with, mm -hmm. and whereas you know with Avengers and Cyberpunk and all that stuff is like even before the PS5 came out, it's like well these are the current gen consoles, and you should have already known how these work. Yeah, kind of thing. And like because at that point the PS5 versions for any of those hadn't even been close to coming out plus uh, I, I i guess the i guess the the main thing at this point is i think that when i think that the metric of whether or not a release will hurt a company a bad release will hurt a, a company is how big the gulf is between what they showed in the trailers and what you got on the lower end system, right? Like that's the problem with Cyberpunk is they just showed this beautiful game in all these trailers. And then when you load it up on the PS4, it was like, this isn't even remotely like what was shown. Like you can't even go well, like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a last gen system, right? You know, it's not going to run it as well as the current one. It was like, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to play the previous gen versions of this because it's, so bad looking and so and the, and, the, and then you start to get into this weird thing where you're like you know uh, grand theft auto 5 was a ps3 game and, it, and that looked great like why why does this look so bad like we're willing to accept a drop in quality but i think that the difference comes in that maybe it's just the perception of when it seems like a developer has straight up lied to you like not even like the little lies not the bull shots or like here's the e3 yeah. demo but like here's the trailer for the game and then you you know then you open up the the package and what's there is just like the 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 really bad knockoff version the it's like i, I don't know i'm trying to think of a good metaphor there's one out there but my brain won't do it because well, no, i'm like late it's, it's, the, the or not even a metaphor but it's like good, a good example of that is uh marvelous capcom infinite Right. Um, it's special edition where it's like you can get the the infinity stone gems or whatever, 
and then you get these Easter eggs that light up, and you're just like, well, what, what the fuck, guys? It's, it's like it's like when you buy something off of Amazon, and it turns out to be some cheap Chinese crap, and like you you oh, yeah. you looked at all the screenshots, they're like, you know, those things where somebody buys like a chair off of off of Amazon, and what they get is like a like a doll chair that's the yeah. same chair, or like a it's like that. It's like you were you were it's basically a bait and switch, and I think that in a lot of ways people people are willing to put up with a certain amount of it but it reaches a level where like you just can't completely lie and then you know give them give them a turd and tell them the, to eat it um but i i mean i don't know and in a lot of ways though it's strange because like again no man's sky has very much come back but they put a lot of work into that cyberpunk is kind of like i think banking on trying to have that comeback no man's sky thing but I have yet to see the amount of care being put back into that game because it's such a mess and it's so big and complicated, right? That that changing anything in it is going to take forever. But yes, yeah, so some games, you know, they they wanted to be they wanted to come back, but like Anthem is a, is the poster boy at this point for mm. the promises that they are going to fix it and mm. they're just fucking walking away, and it's a shame. Mm. All right. Uh, let's see. Our next question I'm going to say comes in from Meger. Meager? I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Um, uh, it says, uh, Dear Jeff and Michael, the dead have risen. Asteroids are falling out of the sky and killer clowns walk among us. Your apartment is the only sanctuary you have. And oddly, it still has power. But with your days numbered and nothing better to do, what's the one game you've had sitting on your backlog that you've never been able to find time for? And as a bonus, what's a game that you want to play through one last time? Uh, hope you're all keeping safe in these crazy times. Keep on raging. Lots of love. And that's from me, me, Meger, Meger, Meager. Men, men, Menger. I don't know how to say it. I'll just say all the same. Cool. The coolest guy on the internet is it's here's from that cool guy that loves everybody. Uh, what's uh, what's what's the game on your backlog that you've been able to find time for that you'd like to play? Uh, Breath of the Wild. What? It's been, it's been on my backlog for a long time. Like, you had played Breath of the, the Wild. <laughs> It was one of the first games I bought, or not even, yeah, one of the first games I bought for that Switch, and I still have not fucking touched it. Say like it's, what? It's been on my shelf for, like, almost two years now, because I bought it two Black Fridays ago. Oh, Michael, you just got done beating Duke Nukem Forever, yes, and you I haven't played... But Duke played... Nukem Forever is shorter. <laughs> Ah, uh, right. But uh, I mean, okay, all right. You and I have different. <laughs> we have different different priorities when it comes to video well, games. Well, the thing uh, is, uh, it, it's one of those things where it's like if I I need to I want. It's one of those games that I want to be able to play for like long periods of time. Yeah. And for some reason, I just haven't found the time to do it. And then usually, when I end up getting the time, I somehow forget I have it, and then I end up <sighs> just not touching it. So that's one of those games because I have you know the Series X and the PS Five. So those mm. have been like. It's it's they're shiny and so it's like ooh shiny things, and so I keep using those for getting my switches there sometimes, which is a shame because like I said, I haven't played Breath of the Wild still. You need to be, you need to get that Mario Golf, man. I can't fucking stop playing Mario Golf. I'm playing so much Mario Golf, kicking ass, kicking so much ass in Mario Golf. I need to get back in the Monster Hunter actually. What's a game you'd play through one last time? Is it Dude Nukem Forever? If you say Dude Nukem Forever, I will reach to this podcast and and bop you <laughs> no, on the nose. No, it would not be Dude Nukem Forever. Only because I just did that. Uh, no, it's Halo Three actually. Okay. So always Halo Three will be always holds a special place in my heart for the sheer amount of memories I have from that campaign mm -hmm. that like I will always remember because I played that campaign like a million times with my friends when I was when it first came out constantly. Like one of my favorite things I ever did in that game was uh, I did a fake sacrifice kind of thing because there's the you've you, you played Halo 3 right uh-huh sort of so you know the, the you know the scarabs the giant like basically they're at, -AT kind of things um so I decided to like for, I decided to go in there and not kill any of the enemies and just destroy it mm -hmm. and then just try to fight my way off of it and like with the enemies still on board and so I basically pretended to sacrifice myself quote unquote and so it's like so we made it like super dramatic as we could and like and when I died, my friend's like, no. And then it just popped up next to him because I respawned. <laughs> okay. It was just like, it was just one of those things. I always remember. It. I will always, like, play, anytime I play Halo 3, like, that's always in the back of my head is the weird, dumb shit high school version of me did in the middle of Halo 3. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's see. The game sitting on my backlog that I've never had time for, I think there's two. One is um, Divinity Original Sin 2. I really, really, really want to play that, but it's just so fucking long and complicated. And the other one is uh, Persona 5, obviously. Like, that would uh, have been my other answer because I started it, but I never finished it. Yeah, me too. And I would like to. Uh, just uh, there's a you know there's like choice paralysis and then there's like knowing a game is a hundred hours long paralysis where you're just like yeah oh fuck's sake and that's not even counting the royale version because i don't have the royale one i have normal persona 5 and i still didn't beat it god i mean at this point i just wait for it to come out on the ps5 enhanced edition whatever here's eight more levels or whatever uh and as a bonus what's a game you'd like to play through one last time it would probably be it probably wouldn't be dark souls because dark souls is too depressing um uh, metal gear solid 3 yes it would 100 percent be metal gear solid 3 i would consider the first one if they do a, a really solid remake on the first one that would probably take take the top of my list uh but three is just like three holds up because they made a version where people have faces and expressions and the heads don't just bop back and forth <laughs> That's uh, true. you know and three is a, a hell of a game there's just so much to the ocelot and it's fucking packed. volgan and eva and, and the, the fucking all those fucking metal gears uh sneaking around in the jungle you gotta shoot some bees and the guy goes ah the bees and there's a bee boss you gotta fight the bee boss you gotta you gotta dig the bees out you gotta go into the screen and fucking take the bees out of you and change your camo all that stuff Ooh, it's good stuff what i, what I love about three are there's so many weird ways of finishing three mm -hmm. that involve like killing bosses in weird ways specifically at the end you yep. can kill the end in three different ways in that game. Mm -hmm. um, one is that you can get the sniper rifle, and then after the cutscene, like when he is first shown on the wheelchair, you can snipe his ass when he's on the wheelchair. You just fucking rapid fire directly into him from the other side of the lake. It's just bang, 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 yeah. bang, 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 bang. And, and you can get him right then and there. His wheelchair, he explodes, and his wheelchair flies in the air and then lands wherever you're standing. Yep. Uh, the second one is that you could, um, <laughs> when the boss fight starts, is you could fast forward to like two weeks set the and clock come back and he's fucking dead yep <laughs> yep like just weird shit like that but Ogre Solid 3 is full of just weird shit like that and I can't help but love it for that reason man Metal Gear Solid 3 the end fight would be one of those things that I would like to uh that I would like to erase from my brain to be able to do again for the first time because like now I really know how to like I can clock that motherfucker in no time flat. Like I I go hold him up, right? You go hold him up to get his camo. Uh yeah. uh but like when it, the first time it was a real that was an interesting one the fucking sniper duel over like several areas um piss him off by eating his bird yep <laughs> yep i always did that first like i was like i see you bird and you're gonna be my dinner <laughs> mm, nom, 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 nom. uh let's see let me take a look here we've got some more questions here in the email inbox but we also have some in the discord that you can get access to by going to patreon.com forward slash rage select and with about five, ten minutes left, let's do some Discord questions. Um, Absolutely. Let's see. Tiberius Monk says, Dear Jeff and Michael, if you could interview anyone in the video game industry, who would that be? And what would be your first question? Also, Final Fantasy VII Remake is my answer to a question from last time about a video game that you finished but found it frustratingly difficult to do. Never playing that again, and that Hell House battle was cheap. I keep the good work, and that's from Tiberius that Monk. Uh, yeah, there's like there's like a bunch of people chiming in, having chats in my podcast fucking feed over here. So I don't know what's a question <laughs> and what's not. Uh, let's see. As far as who would you interview and what would would the first question be? Uh, I know that everybody would think that I would be like uh, uh, Hideo Kojima, but I don't want to interview Hideo Kojima. I get tired of of him d opining on the 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 nature of video games. Uh, I would interview him, but my first question would be like, "Hey, Kojima, what, what happened?" Heck? And then go from yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, what happened with Konami, Kojima? Um, you got to tell me. You got to tell me if you're a cop, Kojima. Yeah, that's <laughs> that everybody knows. That's the that's the interview. It's the code of the interviewer, right? Is they got to answer your question. They can't just take off their microphone. For just walk off, yeah. Yeah, um, well, I'm sure there's other guys. I would love to talk to um, 
fucking I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, Ega, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, the guy oh who yeah, all the Castlevania stuff. I'd love to talk to him and just be like, what was, like, what was going through your head for like a lot of these like, like the f- the way you started these games, like, and now are the head the figurehead of changing the entire landscape of Castlevania for that matter, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's see, this is really hard for me because I never consider it. I never consider what it's like. Wow. What would you want to know from the person who made your favorite video game? And I'm like, nothing. I just like, it doesn't matter what I, I'd, I'd almost you'd rather ask, you'd ask fucking what's his name when Bayonetta three is coming out. <laughs> oh, and he, would, it? <laughs> he would slap me right in the face. That dude is more jacked than I am. He would kick my that ass. Crazy. And like, he, crazy. he does not want people asking about Bayonetta three. <laughs> um, I love that he's like, I'm cool with Bayonetta porn, but she's, she's a dom guys. That's what, that's where your <laughs> issue is. <laughs> I'm just trying to, th- I, I think that no matter who I interviewed, my first question would be, the fuck? Like, just, you know, I want to know that from everybody. Just the fuck? You should, uh, you should interview uh, the guy that we brought up during the, uh, what was his name? The, the guy that you keep playing the games with, uh, the, the, the indie developer. Oh, Joseph, Joseph Ferris. Yeah. Yeah. You should interview him. Be like, how do you keep doing this? Where is you getting your funding? No, yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, you know what? I'd love to, I'd I would love to ask. I would <laughs> I would love to ask. It's such a, so insulting. Suda 51 like how the fuck do you keep getting money? Where do you get money from? I know your games aren't selling well enough and everybody else seems to have to sell like X number of games in order to keep making games, except for you. You just get to keep making games. Like you made the free to play Dark Souls with the Latino Uncle Death on a skateboard. I know that game didn't make a lot of money. How the fuck did you did you get to make another thing after that like how have you not been run out of this business like are you the uve bowl is there like some kind of tax incentive that i don't know about like how is grasshopper or no not grasshopper um um what suit is uh company um uh is it not i thought grasshopper was the was the platinum one uh nope grasshopper founder and ceo of grasshopper manufacturer how the hell does grasshopper manufacturer stay in business like how how <laughs> um i don't know man but they're getting the new no more heroes is coming out soon yeah so. like I I, I I i he wrote the scenario for fire pro wrestling world <laughs> like <laughs> How, how did after okay after travis strikes again no more heroes how did you get to make another game like i'm not saying that that's a bad game but what i'm saying is that normally when you make a video game it costs money are you just not paying the people that work for you are you just are you independently wealthy and you're financing these games out of your own pocket and i didn't know it like did did lollipop chainsaw do so well that like you're just been coasting on that lp money from here forward um maybe who knows yeah that's the thing is so many of these i'm like i'm looking over their stuff and i'm like uh, these all of these can't have sold that well like there's no way like i love he was a a chunk of these games but goddamn how is he the producer on rebuild of evangelion sound impact what the fuck even is that? What is that? <laughs> I can't even find it. It's on the list of games, but I can't even find uh, Suda. No. Okay. What? What? What is Rebuild of Evangelion Sound Impact? It's and a how- PSP game, apparently. Okay. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm game, is what it says. He's the creative producer on the Evangelion rhythm game. There's a rhythm game. Yeah. How? <laughs> Correct from Evangelion, you are not alone, and Evangelion, you cannot advance. How is that a thing? I don't know. What is don't this? Know. What is this? The executive producer and the writer of Black Knight Sword, a side-scrolling platform game co-developed by Grasshopper Manufacturer and Digital Reality for the PS3. Why? How? What is Liberation Made in Sin? A shooter developed by grasshopper banging fat it's like platinum has been trying to like make you know like a sequel to a to a game for years they have to do all this shit work making these like the transformers and teenage mutant ninja turtles and avatar games and meanwhile 
fucking Suda51 is making the rebuild of Evangelion fucking Guitar Hero game in a game called Sedatch Snatcher. Oh, Snatcher. Wait, Snatcher? The Hideo Kojima game? T- wait, 2011? What the? What the? What the fuck? Voice actor? It's a, drama, t- it's a radio drama. That's why it's called Stadatcher. It's a it's a radio drama prequel to Snatcher. Okay, I I my answer is Suda Fifty One, and my first question is the fuck, man. Like how, how do these things happen? And he wrote the script for it too, apparently. What's Ranko Suki Suki Gimme's longest day? Is a multimedia project composed of four short anime films by Sunrise. <laughs> Wow. They were in theaters in 2013. Oh my god. This is amazing. How? 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 <laughs> I don't understand. This motherfucker has been working, let's see, since 1993 at Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3 and and let's see, uh Twilight Syndrome, Silver Case, Michigan, Report from Hell, Killer 7. He managed Samurai Champloo game? Yeah, that was, I forgot about that game, yeah. Contact? Oh, I remember that. I bought that. Like, No More Heroes, Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame? There was a... Fa- Suda51 made a Fatal Frame? What the fuck? This is all news to me, too, Jeff. <laughs> it's a Wii game. <laughs> Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse was not released in America. Suda51 made a Japanese-only Fatal Frame game in 2008 for the Nintendo Wii. What is this? There's one called Frog Minutes from 2011. It doesn't even have a description. It's just it's executive produced. He's on. You got to go to the Suda51 wiki. It's a simple, open-ended experience where the player uh, player's only objective is to feed critters such as grasshoppers and flies uh, to frogs until their appetites are full enough that they could be caught. Frog Minutes contains a total of 10 frogs and five unique critters for them to eat. These 15 creatures have a dedicated field guide. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yep, that's my answer. That's my answer. How does Suda51 exist? I don't even think he's a person. He's just like some kind of... He's like... He found like a hack to the back... To, he's the singular point. He, he's, the, he's the fucking... The end and the beginning. I don't understand how the hell... How the hell? Um, I don't know either. Yeah. Also, he's a big fan of the Smiths, apparently, on the Wikipedia page. Like he's the band. A lot of people, according to this Wikipedia page. Yeah. Morrissey. Uh, yeah. Kafka. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's it. Oh, you know what? You know what? We're a little over time, but I want to do this one last because then I can start making people put more questions in Discord. I hate everyone, so shut up. Says, hey, hey, a hi, a hey, oh, to uh, Jeff and Michael. I was thinking about my favorite endings to an anime. What is your favorite anime ending? One of mine is the ir- ending of Irresponsible Captain Tyler, where they all essentially play Space Chicken. Um, this is just like, hey, man, what's cool? What's some cool stuff? I mean, you know. Hmm. If you don't if you don't break down into tears at the end of the Cowboy Bebop, then yeah. you're a cop, and I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, the end of the Cowboy Bebop is fucking crushing. Yep. Um, one of my favorite endings, uh, again from some of the same creators, is I love the ending of the Space Dandy because the idea is that it turns out the narrator was basically like God, ah. and he was just like, "Hey, Dandy, you're the only one who's like capable of replacing like literal, literally God." And he's like, now nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And it just resets like basically back to the first episode. And it's just him talking about boobs again. And it's like, that's Space Dandy. And I love him. <laughs> uh, um, there's some good anime endings out there. Gurren um, Lagan is, 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 is like the total tits, man. Like that's yeah. just like they're fucking, they, they, they do that time jump to the future. And then by the end, they've like, They've they they've interconnected like eighteen different robots to throw universes at the anti spiral that is trying to rewrite reality, and then they just scream, "Who the hell do you think I am?" And then they all fucking join together into one gigantic spiral attack. I love stuff like Gurren Lagan, where it's just like the whole thing is spirals, and it's just yeah. like spirals, man. And it's like in um, Kill la Kill, where it's like close. It's all about threads and clothes. And then at the end, it turns into like 
I I want to put clothes on the entire world and bind them with my will. And they're like, but I have the secret scissors of destiny that can cut through the threads of your horrible clothes, madame. That one is another one that gets fucking nuts at the end. <laughs> um, the ending of Full Metal Alchemist is also real good. That one gets so weird at the end. Like by the time you get to the end of it, a lot of animes are like that, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, a lot of animes, like uh, very few of them, are very straightforward. Like I know Naruto's ending is pretty straightforward. You know, he becomes the Hokage. Um, you know, like he has a son. Like everything turns out really well for that guy, kind of thing. Um, the ending of Dragon Ball Z is super fucking weird. There's a wait. Um, is there an end to Dragon Ball Z? Well, because there's the ending. Because every every Dragon Ball has an ending, except for. The only one that doesn't have an actual ending is Super, but mm. technically Super takes bl- place before the ending to Z, because because um, original Dragon Ball's ending is that he defeats King Piccolo and then he gets married and that's how it ends. The ending of Dragon Ball Z is it's like 15 years after the defeat of Boo, he um, he finds out that Boo is going to be reincarnated as this like small Indian kid, and so he's like so he fights him at a tournament. And then he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take this kid, and then I'm gonna train him." And um, so, bye, <laughs> kind of thing. Let's just like, like, well, you're you're just gonna leave your friends and your family to, to to train this kid. And it cuts to Vegeta just being like, "Yeah, um, I know why he's like. Besides trying to get like a new protector of Earth, he just really wants to fight this kid at full power. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> like, like, you, like, even when it cuts to Goku leaving, he's like, "We're gonna fight a lot." Like, he's just really excited as just the entire thing. And it's just, it's a weird ending. Like, it's just a strange. Ending. Like, that's why they made Dragon Ball GT because it's that's that's actually supposed to be what takes place after Z, but like, it's not canon now because of everything that's happened. This um, list is shit. And Bumps. it has a decent ending. Too. Honestly, I actually kind of like the ending of the Dragon Ball GT. He ends up, um, he defeats the final enemy with a giant spirit bomb and becomes one with the dragon mm-hmm. and is now like infinite, essentially. And he's, you know, and he's just out there maybe protecting the world. And it's a really, it's a really nice ending, honestly. Char's counterattack is a good, is a good end to yeah. a, a section of Gundam, even though it's not, totally the end but uh it's, it's the ending of amuro's story because that's the thing that's the thing about gundam is you can look at gundam and be like well this is the ending of this person's story and right or is an ending then you can anything else because you see timeline is fucking long yeah but the end yeah Charles counter talks is a great ending to amuro's story i think fucking as, as much as i know you don't like iron blood orphans but i really liked iron blood orphans ending mm-hmm. because iron blood orphans is a, is a tragedy and and I don't mean like the show is bad. I mean it's literally like it's basically a tragedy, like from like you know a rise and then a fall. And I really like that because of it. Hmm. It's funny. I'm I'm I'm. Oh, sorry. Continue. No, I was gonna bring up because you just passed one that I I like the ending, but I'm not a fan of the show, mm. which is Death Note. <laughs> I was gonna. I was actually gonna say that is that like death the last ending watching light yagami just like completely break down into nothingness like a bitch. <laughs> is great i don't have a, as much of a problem with the second half of death note as a lot of other people do but uh but yeah the problem is i keep looking at these lists online and like they're like neon genesis evangelion and i'm like but is it really over i'm still waiting for 3.0 plus 1.0 once upon a bitch or whatever it's called like uh <laughs> like i guess the original the end of evangelion is like okay if you read the supplemental material but fuck hideyako ano for not putting any of that stuff in there and expecting me to know about the fucking aliens that came to create life on earth and how the one is the eve and adam and the spear of longinus and like you did they never explain any of that shit like here i'm looking at this thing it's like oh no i'm i'm sorry i'm not looking up best anime endings i'm looking up best anime period and that's why i like one piece and fucking the shit that's still going on is still on here because my like, one piece one piece doesn't have a fucking ending it does not have an ending. <laughs> um samurai shampoo's ending is kind of is okay i like this ending fair enough it's just that they sort of just walk away mm-hmm. it's really the ending of that one um yeah gurn Lagan, you've already mentioned is amazing a lot of them are still um, just Trigon's going ending has a great just final like fight episode but it just sort of ends is my only issue with trigon yeah um, although they eventually they made a movie, but even the movie is more based on the manga than it is the 
the anime version. I haven't I haven't watched a lot of these. Either that or they're they're still ongoing. Like a lot of the stuff that's actually ending. Like, no, fuck that. That's <laughs> Fire Force ending one. Like no, the Fire Force isn't over yet. Demon Slayer ending two. Like Demon Slayer is not over. <laughs> like God damn it. Um, yeah, I don't know. the The thing is that I feel like a lot of the best anime right now is still ongoing so it's hard to see the endings of stuff right like the stuff that we've listed are basically just like all the the must watches from like the 90s and the early 2000s and the like the before it went so uh, everything went so ninja shonen and it was stupid for like a decade um when it was just all naruto and bleach and bullshit (coughs) but um but the well, current I, stuff is still ongoing, so I don't know. Yeah, I recently rewatched all of Scryde, which I also really like. Um, the ending is... The, like, it's the funny thing about Scryde is it feels like the last episode is an epilogue. Mm-hmm. Because the, the final... Like, the episode prior to that feels like the actual ending. But then somebody was like, well, what would happen if the two main characters fought to the death? That <laughs> kind of thing. And, like, I, I actually appreciate that because it's just one giant fight between the two main characters. Hmm. And it's a lot of fun, but... Yeah, um... A lot of the Gundam endings would be my answer, though. I'm a big fan of most of the Gundam endings, whether it's the ending to Unicorn, whether it's the ending of OG uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. Yeah. The ending to Zeta is heartbreaking. Oh, wait, the uh, MS team has a real banger yeah. of an ending. Yeah. Um, the ending to Double 83, it's like, fuck, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, same with the ending to Double 80. Like, <gasps> I fucking, that depresses the shit out of me every time I watch the ending. Oh, I just remembered. I just remembered. (laughs) Helsing Ultimate. (laughs) By the time you get to the end, like, it is the most cathartic thing of all time because, like, Ultimate, by the time it gets to the end, is just, like, an apocalypse. It is a vampire fucking apocalypse. (laughs) Like, um, it's kind of insane. Um, But have you you ever ever watched uh, Helsing Ultimate? Not not like the whole thing. I watched like half of it, but I never got a chance to finish uh, it. Man, by the end, okay, like, well, anybody could, could close their ears because by the end, the fucking like in the in the in the original, it turns out that there was like this one guy that was making vampires. There's like this one weird like Jamaican vampire or something that was making vampires. I don't know. I remember. Huh. Uh, but in the manga, and then what happens in the show is the place where the original anime ends is where it just starts getting started, where it turns out that there were a bunch of Nazi vampires. And then like at a certain point, uh, they're the ones who've been making the vampires to test the Helsing organization. And at a certain point, they show up over London in Nazi blimps and they they jump out of the blimps and kill like 97% of the population of London, um, trapping Alucard on a boat in the water because he can't go in the water or he'll die because he's a vampire. And then like the Catholic Church comes in with like 5,000 holy warriors uh, to fight the vampires and they get annihilated. And then like the Helsing organization has like four people left in it because all their mercenaries get destroyed. And then Alucard shows up in this aircraft carrier where he's crashed an SR-71 Blackbird into it vertically. So it's just a giant cross now that's on fire. And he drives it up the Thames and crashes it into downtown London and then gets out and starts murdering Nazi zombie vampires by the like, trillions and then it turns out that walter was a bad guy and he's turned into evil and then there's like this fat guy and there's like a werewolf girl boy kid thing and like saris is she's in love with the with the mercenaries it gets it gets fucking nuts man like it gets nuts (laughs) turns out that at world war ii alucard was like a little russian girl like he was like he was like a 12 year old girl vampire with the russian hat and like that was him during World War II, and it's fucking unreal. And like it all makes sense if you watch it in order, but by the time you get to the end, sure. it's like, how the hell did I get here? I thought this was like a Buffy oh, the geez. Vampire Slayer show. So anyway, um, well that's it. That's a big old podcast. That's one big old podcast. Hey, it's like uh, we had some news, we had some trailers, we had some talks about anime. You know, um, Michael, where can people find you? When you're not here, where can people go listen to you talk about Godzilla's singular point with a bunch of people who liked it a lot or maybe didn't? Who knows? Yeah, you can find you can find me on oneofus.net. Yeah, we recently had a 
a review for Godzilla Singular Point. You'll hear Matt's a lot of Matt's thoughts on it too. Yeah. Um, as well as more of mine, as well as Aaron's and um, and Jen's. If you would, uh, if you remembered her from past Rage Like videos as well. Uh huh. And uh, that is pretty much the, almost the end of the questions that I have. So if you have a burning question, get it into mail at ragesite.com. And as previously mentioned, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash ragesite if you want to put a question into the Discord server. That's it. We're done. Hooray! I'm going to go watch Kangaroo Jack. Bye, everybody.